It's tough being in that area too. Is it? It is. It is Monroeville, hundred percent. That's what it is. I fucking hate it. We rolled in there. <clears throat> we left in the evening, which was whatever. Yeah. And uh, the last left we make off the highway, there's a Chick Fil A there in the shopping center. I was like, let's get Chick Fil A before we go to the house. I just hate not having food there. Bro, it was a triple line. It wasn't a double line. It was a triple line. You couldn't even enter the lot to get in line. I've never seen a triple line before. It's a triple line. There's a triple line that there came to a point that no one could exit or enter the lot. It was gridlocked. Gridlocked. <laughs> Fucking safety hazard. Fire lanes blocked. Just Christmas in Exeter. It was intense. Man. So I went to Moe's next door. There was no one there. You not went, one. I walked in. I was like, great. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, this is good. Well, I was scared because I'm like, there's not one single soul here right now. And that fucking parking lot is back. Yeah. So I, I don't think, I think Moe's is a little shitty back there, but that's all I had. Better than gridlock at Chick-fil-A. Yep. Chicken fry. I want a waffle fry. Chicken sandwich and a waffle fry. <laughs> Well, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah. How, was your Christmas good? Yes, it was, a, it was a good time. Even though you guys celebrated a little early, you yeah, impatient fuck. Yeah, at least 10 days early yeah. we did presents. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Shane, how was your Christmas? It was good. Thanks. Christmas lovin's? Yeah. Those are important days. Yeah. I'm really hoping that that was like a, a big important thing for everybody. I stressed my, my, my uh, thought of or my level of... Uh, excitement and importance for christmas lovins yeah can't forget about each other huge yeah fellatio goes a long way and if you forgot new year's is right around the corner yeah nothing like a surprise blow job hey boom yeah going out with a bang (laughs) or a blow just make sure that yeah Yeah. unless unless you want a baby unless you want to leave it in there and make babies september babies made in january right yeah. October babies. Am yeah. I right? Nope. Yep. Yeah, good job. Nine good months. Good math. Yeah. Good math. Quick math. Good math. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the HWMF podcast. I'm your host, Seth Ferris, here with my heterosexual life mate, Bob, and our esteemed IT specialization or head of marketing, seventh in command. <laughs> <laughs> Bad math. <laughs> Jane. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Shane's like, what the fuck are you talking about? I run this bitch. <laughs> no, it was, uh, uh, I will say that this podcast has, uh, it's, it's awesome to see everybody respond. Uh, the messages that we get, this is the podcast made for the hardworking motherfuckers. For everybody out there that just loves working hard, pushing themselves, and doing the good shit for themselves and their family. Uh, over the weekend... It was a nice weekend. It was. Good four days. Mm-hmm. I didn't do very much other than just kind of hang out around the house. I did a bunch of dad duties. Mm-hmm. I trained. I, I did go off the diet, which I'm kind of like okay with. It's a holidays. I really don't give a fuck. No, it's okay. I don't stress about that stuff anymore mm-hmm. because I know that I'm just going to go back to lifting weights and doing a fuck ton of cardio. And I didn't stop while I was doing it. I just enjoyed some ham sammies. Yeah. Maybe some cookies. I ate a lot. I, I, I got fucking... It was bad. I mean, it looks like you did. I, I know. It went right to my cheeks. No, I, not at all. You still have a fucking jawline. Oh, I, I'm a little thicker everywhere. But it's okay. Yeah. I'm chicken, rice, egg whites, and fucking grits. Like I put 10 pounds on. You did? Yeah. In like four days. Really? Yeah. How's that possible? I don't know. I think it's a lot of water. Like a lot, I'm holding a lot of yeah, water. You don't get. It's hard to get fat. You can't like, gain ten pounds of fat in four days. It's it's the Hannah. She's been uh, she's been on a diet and she's been killing it. She lost a ton of weight. Like uh-huh. her goal weight was a joke. She's like, oh, I just want to get to this number. I'm like, you'll be there in like two weeks. Two weeks later, she's like, I'm almost at my goal weight. I'm like, fuck you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you young bitch. <laughs> um, but uh, I was like, one meal isn't going to make you fat. Mm-mm. Just like one meal didn't make you skinny. Right. I was like, it takes time. I was like, however, I was like, if that meal turns into a week, then you're fucked. Yep. 
but uh yeah i was a day away from like it being really bad oh really yeah well i threw in like over a half marathon in there on saturday oh okay and it just like picked everything up back up again then sunday i just Mm. i hammered food yeah Yeah. i mean it's no big deal i mean i i think that i saw a lot of people uh online you know the back and forth with everything i think that uh the holidays are supposed to enjoy it yeah like i i don't um the only thing that really controls my life anymore is work. I don't let like food control my life. I don't let uh, certain things control it. I've learned to uh, like, I don't know, my mind is just at ease because I know I'm just, I like my cardio, mm-hmm. I like my weights, and I like eating chicken and rice. Yep. So it's not like I'm ever going to deviate away from it for too long or not ever be able to come back from it. Mm-hmm. But uh, so what I was getting at was I uh, oh, this weekend I spent uh, time with the kiddos. Uh, my fucking six year old might be th- one of the funniest people on the planet. <laughs> this fucking kid gives a fuck about nothing except gymnastics, her playroom and good food. That's it. Yep. Like her imagination ran wild this weekend. Um, it's so cool having a six year old like with Christmas time. Yeah. Legitimately is like Christmas is the greatest thing in the fucking world. Yep. And it is awesome being Santa Claus. <clears throat> so fucking cool. Yeah. But she got a ton of stuff for gymnastics and bro, like Leo's. Like she has Leo's set for every day this week. Lined up. Lined up, like ready to go. <laughs> and Hannah's like, go look in Emmy's room. And I'm like, all right. So I go in there. I'm like, what you doing? And there's Leo's lined up. And I'm like, what's this? She's like, every day of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm like, you don't have gymnastics, like, on Friday. She's like, what mo- I might. I'm like, nope. No, might you don't. stretch. Yeah. I don't know. I might be there <laughs> for so extra. great. So great. It was awesome. But, uh, no, I I think that's why I don't know. My family, like, we had a really good time over the weekend. And I, I, it's the kids now. Like, now I got my nephew on on my sister's side, and then my niece and nephew over on uh, Kim's side. And the kids, like, brought life back to, like, Christmas again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. It's a really good time. Yep. Adeline got a ton of clothes. She's a straight teenager. Yep. Fucking like, she's there. Mm-hmm. I don't know how I'm. I'm. I'm good. I'm good with it. Could be all right. I'm okay. I just. It's there. Like it happens so fast. Like that shit your dad would say. Like oh, I'm growing up so fast, and mm-hmm. I'm like watching it. I'm like, holy fuck. But I don't even feel that old, and I don't think I am. I'm 36, but I have a 13 year old, so you know it's a little intense. Yeah. But yeah, it's fucking wild. Cause like, she's gonna be tall. Mm-hmm. Like she's, fuck, it's scary. It is, but I think she'll be good. I think I'm more worried about the dudes. Like she's a bit of a fucking bitch. Eh, she's not. She's a sweetheart. She's a nice girl, but she will bust your fucking balls. She will fuck you up. Yeah, you better be a pretty strong-minded. Yeah, you uh, can't be person. a pussy with her. No, no, uh-uh. <laughs> no, she's gonna say something to get right under your skin. Uh-huh. She does it to me often, little fucker. Shane's like, yeah, I've heard it on the on the on the online, on the internet. <laughs> yep. She did it to me this weekend. <laughs> She's fucking brutal. It's great, but um, <clears throat> no, I was uh, during my cardio and my my weightlifting sessions over the weekend. Uh, you know, I was doing a lot of listening to some of the stuff on YouTube about like masculinity and toxic masculinity and all that shit, mm-hmm. bro. And and we have built everything that we have on being prideful of fucking being a hardworking motherfucker. The all-American roughnecks. Like, all the people that I went to and saw, like, this whole company was built upon my values of growing up, and your values, and fucking millions of people out there. All these people, like, bro, all the people I was seeing at job sites, all these hard dudes, like, fucking... This this time of year is whenever the the masculinity and the and the fucking pride of being a hardworking motherfucker comes to life mm-hmm. at the holidays. You work so hard, you work yourself into the ground. You work the overtime. You work every waking second to provide a great time for your family. Get your wife the new earrings. 
Get your kids the fucking G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. The PS5s. All of that. You work the overtime. You take pride in driving yourself into the ground. And most of the time, like from from what I grew up in, was that blue-collar, hard-labor side of life. Mm -hmm. The hard-working motherfuckers, that's where the mentality came from. And then I realized that that mentality is very strong in many aspects, not just blue-collar, but also Mm white-collar. And that's why white collar has also gravitated towards us because they still have that mentality. Yep. They grew up in a place where their dad was the fucking steel worker, where their dad worked construction. He gave them the opportunity to go to college and become an engineer. So the engineer is a white collar guy but works in a blue collar industry or something of that aspect like that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and this time of year and summertime vacations, pretty much all the time, but these times uh, were, are put on pedestals. Because in the morning, on Christmas morning, whenever I see my kids go absolutely ham and they are smiling ear to ear, excitement, you see the videos, <clears throat> like all of it comes over you. Like the sense of pride, the sense of excitement, the sense of like uh, uh, of worth that's incredible. <clears throat> and I'm like, I worked hard, Hannah worked hard to make this all happen. And I'm a masculine guy, macho, however you want to say it from a derogatory sense or from funny, but I like it. These types of people that follow us, that love us, have that mentality, and we should be very proud of it. Mm -hmm. Whenever, uh, like, that's how this whole world, this whole world goes around with every different type of person, but... With everything I was watching about the toxic masculinity and how it's viewed, and there's such a skewed perception of it. Because when people, whenever the people that are saying masculinity is toxic, they're not like, oh, I'm not talking about providing for your family. Okay, then what are you talking about? Are you talking about me liking to be a fucking shirtless, bearded fucking animal that likes to chop wood with no shirt on out in the cold? Is that toxic? Or is that just me being a jerk off? Well, it's me being a jerk off because I like it, because it's fun. Mm -hmm. I get off on that shit. Is it the whole whole perception of me just busting balls with my buddies about my old lady giving me a fucking blowjob last night? Is that toxic? No, because I find that to be exciting for myself and whenever I hear about Shane getting laid and fucking his girl... While his mom's not while while her mom's knocking on the fucking door, like that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> or about you blowing Kim out fucking every waking second in Vegas and me listening through the walls. <laughs> I don't know. Like I don't know if that's toxic. I don't know. I think it's I I I get uh, some type of sick enjoyment out of it, but <sighs> with people like me, the way I look and. Uh, I think that that the that phrase toxic masculinity is being used to to downplay uh, it's it's being used to attack a certain way of life is how is what it's what it's coming down to. Yeah. I think that somehow some way they whoever they is has put a, put upon less negative connotation of that because they think that I hate gays. Or I hate interracial relationships. Or I hate any of this fucking social justice bullshit because I look the way I do. Mm-hmm. Or because there, there is one person out there that looks like me that hates that, hates that stuff. And because I, I, I can't find anything that I do that is toxic. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm a very masculine man. I have that alpha male mentality. And I've and I'm starting to fucking after looking at everything, and watching and listening, I'm starting to think that it's kind of an attack on 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 our way of our way of life here, mm-hmm. being a hardworking motherfucker. Because it, it after I'm like it made me feel a certain way. I'm like I don't feel good about this. It doesn't make me like like okay like why why do I feel like. I'm being looked at as an as an asshole or as this misogynistic fuck. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. whenever I might be here, I'm like, well, you know, fucking talking about your wife getting blown out is misog- is misogynistic. Or I'm like, it's not really. It's kind of like good job like impressive that's what i mean <laughs> am i thinking in the wrong sense shane no I, I think you're thinking in the right sense but i think there's also people out there that get offended like by you saying those type of things so like the soft culture like i was just so gonna why, say that yeah why people started saying happy holidays instead of just merry christmas because people get offended because you're not saying merry christmas like maybe they don't celebrate it's, that it's, it's it's the softer community like classifying our way of thinking and our way of working and our and our way of life. So, mm-hmm. uh, uh, okay, I understand because, that. Because like I don't I don't look I was going to bring up too like there's there's plenty of of women that are in this role as well. Like in that blue collar hard working play that masculine role to the family. They have to. So how can that fucking be toxic? It's how it's what you have to do to do your job and your part of your life. I don't understand the toxic part of it. I understand it, it's there's a negative connotation with it, but okay. So, all these social justice warriors, mm-hmm. okay, all of these people that are for all this, all of it. Mm-hmm. If you're saying that people like myself are toxic, like we're toxic masculinity, who built your home? Who built the building that you teach at? Who built the building that you work at? Who built everything? Very rough, rowdy, uncouth motherfuckers. Mm -hmm. The people that I was on job sites with. The people that I saw every single day that were some rough, rowdy, intense motherfuckers. That loved their families just like I do. That loved their daughters because they had three daughters. They didn't have a son. So they knew that they had to provide a life for them be able to go to college or create opportunity for them so how's it toxic the very place that you're in was built by hard-working men majority of men 95 fucking percent i probably i don't even know the, the 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 percentage of men that work in hard and heavy construction but i'm going to say it's in the fucking high 90s by those type of men i find it ironic because even if you are, like, dude, I don't care if you're Harry Styles wearing a fucking dress on Vogue. Like, maybe I find that offensive. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't give a fuck, though. I, I, I look at it, I was just like, I was this weekend spending all that time, you know, cardio and, and, and listening during my training. I'm like, this is starting to freak me the fuck out. No, it's, it's an attack well, on my way of life because I'm not a bad person. I don't care if you're fucking gay, straight, black, white, Asian transgender i don't give a fuck that's what makes america great the opportunity to be free life liberty and the pursuit of happiness and then i look at this and i'm like you need masculine men you need men like me you need men you have to have them because i'm all for progression and i'm all for technology i'm all for it but don't ever forget how important it is to be a hard-working motherfucker. You can never forget that. What do you do when your toilet don't fucking flush? Do you call the tech team? What do you do when there's a fucking water main break? Do you call in the social justice fucking professor? No. You call the dude in that is one ignorant, hard-working motherfucker that knows exactly what to do when shit hits the fan with really big shit. And the dude is probably an arrogant, confident, hardworking dude that looks like he's the guy you call when shit hits the fan. Because he is that guy. Because whenever shit is hitting the fan, you can't be like, well, you know, I know you have a lot of feelings. And I know that you really didn't want to wake up at 3.30 this morning. And if you're too tired, you can go home and all of this town can be without water for 72 hours because you were tired this morning. No, 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 no. That's not how the fuck this works, you cocksucker. You get the (laughs) fuck in that hole and you fix this shit right fucking now. You know what I mean? Mm Mm-hmm. 
because that's what we as uh, this whole entire company, everything, our thought processes was was built around people that were hard, that were that do the hard shit, that fucking take pride in being that guy or being on that crew or being the team that comes in that's like, here they come. Oh, boy. That's what you should be prideful of. So these types of times of year, the holidays, vacationing, all those guys that are those guys, like the bridge superintendents. Like, I, I watched it whenever I worked at Kokosin. Like, those dudes were bad motherfuckers. Like, they knew exactly what to do. They were seasoned. They were fucking on it. Mm-hmm. They were fucking assholes at times. However, their crew, oh, they were like, I'm with him. Like, the bridge superintendent took the whole team. Their team from bridge to bridge to bridge. Yeah. And and I'm looking and I'm thinking, I'm like, all this all this stuff going on right now, no. You be a hard working motherfucker. Mm-hmm. You be prideful. This whole thing about saying masculinity is toxic, fuck all that shit. Fuck it all. I think it's fucking I think it is completely blown out of whatever the fuck you want to say. It's wrong. Mm-hmm. Not toxic. Mm -hmm. It's necessary. It is very necessary. Mm -hmm. I think the people who say that stuff are just hypocrites, you know? Like like you said, as soon as something breaks, who are you going to call? Yes. Bro, like I said, I'm all for things getting better and us growing as people. Like a snake sheds its skin. Like everybody in their life has done something where they're they're a little regretful of. Mm -hmm. Everybody has done something where they're like... Fuck me, dude. Really, really wish I wouldn't have said that to yeah. her. Really, really wish I wouldn't have did that. Like when you get too stoned and you think about that thing you did when you were like 15 years old and you're like, ah, uh, those memes and shit, you ever see them? Yep. Like those are, those, we all have those moments in our life. And more than likely, if you've had, you usually have them in different aspects and that's how you grow as a person. Like you shed your skin and you grow. You become better. You learn. So I'm all about moving forward. However, don't take away the importance of being a fucking hardworking person, hardworking mm-hmm. motherfucker. In e- anything that you do, whether it's blue collar, white collar, you're the fucking, you're, 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 whatever you do, you have to. Like, I, I, I just, I'm blown away at how this is, how it became such a strong subject. And I'm like, I feel like it's a ploy. I feel like it was a ploy put into the fucking media and put everywhere yep. to play down hardworking people. Because I don't care if you didn't get any fucking sleep. I don't care if you didn't get no sleep last night. The fuck could work. You care if I got any fucking sleep? No. Get the fucking work. I don't give a fuck. That's what makes you a better person. If I'm always worried about your feelings, your feelings, our feelings as a human being is always to take the easiest road out. Fuck your feelings. Fucking work. That's how this that's how this whole entire fucking world was built. Mm-hmm. That's how everything was built. It wasn't built on me worrying about your fucking feelings this morning. I'm excited. You should wake up with stiff dick, rub it on your old lady or your or your male friend. I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. And get to fucking work. Mm-hmm. Don't give a flying don't give two flying fucks. I just care about are you a good person? And are you working hard? I it, it's blowing my mind. Well, taking that f- from everyday life to sports. Did you see this weekend? Uh, Dwayne Wade played his son Sire in one on one. Did you see that leak? Uh-uh. So it leaked. The video was on Sports Center, Bleacher Report, everything. That he's playing his son one on one. He's talking shit on his son. And this son's like, uh, I forget if he's like eighteen, nineteen. Oh, he's but, old enough to. Dude, talking shit, beating his ass one on one, and. People were in the comments <laughs> saying, like, oh, he's too hard on him. He's, he should be nicer, motivated. Like, what do you think he's doing? You think he's you, you think he's trying to build a soft person? To, he wants to play in the NBA, and you think a person like that, treating him like that, is going to get him there? Fuck if, no. If Kobe Bryant played today, everybody would fucking hate that dude. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If Michael Jordan played today, everybody would hate him. Mm-hmm. The world is getting softer, and I think that the toxic masculinity is a ploy to do so. Mm-hmm. I believe it. Mm-hmm. It's I'm, I, 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 I was thinking 
after it became such a subject in my head, bro, my kid, okay, you're a, these people, the internet, there's a, there is a huge surge of young people on the internet. Like all the stuff on the, in the, um, watching online, like from a fitness perspective, like the whole, the natty or not, and the whole steroids, drugs, and life thing. And I'm like, oh boy, like I'm, I'm going through everything and I'm thinking to myself, oh boy, there's a whole new group of people that don't understand everything. Mm-hmm. It's like it's like it reset from fucking three years ago. Yeah, it's like there's a whole new group of people that just it's like a reset. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, do you know like a lot of people take steroids? You all know steroids are bad, right? Like, what do you what, what what's what's going on right now? It's like it's like there's like an age group that that didn't know anything about it for years, and now just because they are present on the internet, yeah, they they're stumbling upon it and they're like so over the top shock and i'm like and then like in and like steroids are cheating in bodybuilding no bud that's part of the game yeah. bodybuilding is a fucking all or nothing mm-hmm. do or die type of fucking and, and, and type of arena mm-hmm. like it is there's no rules in bodybuilding yeah. there's zero zero fucking rules well even steroids and other sports like they the the this age group, whoever we're talking about, whoever this is, I don't know. They didn't see the era of the the Barry Bonds and the fucking all the baseball fucking you know steroid things. And bro, it's every sport. It's all Olympics. It's football. It's basketball. It's all of them. dude, all of them. But they, it's like they were completely. They didn't hear anything about it the last three years. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. And then like uh, in in like the natty or not thing, I'm like. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't mm-hmm. care if you're natty or you're fucking, you're not. Like, I could care less. Like, it, it, sort of like Mike O'Hearn. What is it? Oh Simeon? Is it Sim- Simeon, Simeon Panda? Panda. Yeah. yeah, like, I don't, bro, I don't care if he's natural or not. Like, he's never going to talk about it because he's making a fuckload of money not talking about it. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I've taken a lot of steroids. I take my HRT now. Maybe I take a little too much growth. I do like growth hormone. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... Whether or not he is natural or on something, he looks phenomenal. Mm. He works really hard. Yeah. Like, to look like he does, even no matter if you take something or not, it's, it's very difficult. Mm. It's like the Monday morning quarterback or the guys that are hung over, fucking all fat and shit laying on the couch. Be like, I can't believe he just missed that throw. <laughs> I can't yeah. believe Simeon Panda or, takes Winstrel. Or, or when you're watching uh, the America's Got Talent or something, like, that person sucks, but ah, you can't do it. Horrible or, singing skills. Yeah. Or the or, fashion shows, that person's ugly. Yeah. <laughs> I love those. Man, remember that time in high school? I, I, I threw that one ball. Like, it's just, it's. I, I believe it's like a lack. I, I feel, I'm like, it's this lack of... Um, Lack of consideration or appreciation for someone's hard work. Mm-hmm. Like I, I love I, dude. I don't. The cancel culture today, the 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 judgment culture of today, like it's huge. It is massive on the internet. And I look and I'm thinking to myself, I I don't want none of it. I don't want anybody canceled. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. I I don't want it. I don't want anything bad to happen to people, especially because what we just had with this time of year, the Christmas time. Mm-hmm. Bro, I don't want nobody to get canceled. Bro, if I don't like somebody, I just don't pay attention to them. If someone's canceled and they have a family, or you try to fucking ruin them, bro, you're trying to take food off their table. Well, it, it, it's like a, it's a whole transition. Like people are more into seeing the downfall of someone than seeing them on this this high. Yeah. And, and and it's it's the same thing. I just read a fucking article of everything that's posted or written in the newspaper or or, or written for news anchors. Statistically, the, these viewers and the, these showings are higher when the when the subject is negative, even when it's a positive headline. Like, oh, school's going back into session because this went down and restrictions are lifted. But that's a bad thing because this, this, and this. Like, negativity is driving everything Bro, right it's now. wild. Yeah, it's scary. It's, it is because yep. I, I, I just look and I'm like, this is, it's huge. And I'm like, I don't want nothing bad for nobody. I want to see success. I want to see people make money. I want to see people... Do good for their families. Yeah. I want to see the good. Like right now, 
bro, the world, we're watching people fucking lose left and right. Yeah. We're watching the restaurant industry lose. We're watching the gym industry lose. Mm -hmm. We're watching these industries where people have put their life savings into things and lose. And here, a group, a large group of people just feeding off a of negativity in there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, holy fuck. Holy fuck. You're missing the boat on life. Yeah. The good shit. Yeah. It's pretty fucking wild right now, dude. Yeah. Like your, your entertainment is sitting there and reading about Negative biz, shit. Business, businesses going out of business. Yes. Where you should be out there supporting these things, not should be out there living the life, not looking at it. Not watching it. Yeah. And then, and then criticizing. Mm -hmm. It's fucking blowing my mind. Yeah. Because it, it, it's it, every morning we walk into this building and we have that giant check for Zoe. Like, every single morning, I look at that check, and I'm like, that was one thing where a large group of people got together and did great. Mm -hmm. Did greatness. Not, like, goodness. It was greatness. Yep. That girl is still alive to this day going through more fucking treatments. Her family, well, the, the stuff that Logan's dad that owns the Chick-fil-A's Chick mm -hmm. had fucking this whole entire company come in and decorate their entire house for Christmas. Like... Because he's a huge follower. The owner of Chick one of the Chick fil A's listens to the podcast. Mm -hmm. Big fans of what we do. And he's like, We're gonna do good. Yep. We're gonna decorate, we're gonna hire a company to come in and decorate their whole fucking house for Christmas. Because they've been spending their whole entire fucking days, their weeks, the past month or so in Cincinnati getting treatment for their daughter that's possibly gonna die from brain cancer. Mm -hmm. like, holy fuck, dude. Mm -hmm. Like, do something good. And I look around, and I'm like, what, what's going on? How has this culture become such negative, judgmental, like, just, I'm fucking shocked and pretty disgusted that people feed off of watching failures and criticism of other people. Mm -hmm. Like, if I don't like something, I just don't, I, I just, I, I just move on from it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm starting to get freaked out because... I feel like m the more people that are going in this direction, the uh, the less people wanting the good. Do mm -hmm. you think I'm right in thinking that way? Yep. Like we need yeah. more. We need more people like Fuad. Like Fuad Abiyad does a great job of pulling out the good, the funny, like we do on here, mm -hmm. like we do with everything. Like him does a great job of pushing positivity. Yeah. Like that's what it needs to be. Needs to be stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's tough, dude. I, I, and I feel like it's a very specific like group, or or, or demographic or age group, like not demographic but age group for like for sure. Because like I look at like I don't know. I hung out with my brother a lot this weekend. He's young. He's, yeah, eight, he's young. Eight, eighteen. You know, first year or first half semester in in college, and like his views on things are not. The negative ones, like he has very positive views on everything, okay. and 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 doesn't question things to be like a cocksucker, but questions things because he wants to learn. And sure. and I'm like, okay, I was like, that's the way I thought in high school. You know, that's the way I looked at things. And you know, he has he has tons of black friends and white friends and gay friends and like I don't know who. It's like a, it's it's like we're being turned against a certain age group or or certain people. I, I don't know what it is, dude. Yeah, I'm 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 just I'm I'm thinking out loud right now. Same here. Like it just but I noticed it too. Like it just sprung out of nowhere and now it's like everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz I I I thought like I thought us questioning Michael Hearns and uh Natty or Natty or not was like 15 20 years ago. Yeah. We've already established he's an alien. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone knows that. Yeah. There's like sure. 10 clips on Machiavelli of us saying that. Okay. He's an alien. He is. Proven. <laughs> yes, without a doubt. Whenever aliens show up, they'll be like, "Hello, Michael." Yep. Or well, he's well, vegan well. too. He's vegan. Look me. Mhm. Mm he's vegan animals, <laughs> they eat vegetables. <laughs> like like did you I don't know. No, no. I really want. Uh, it's just the young community. I think. Uh, do you? So, a million things just ran through my head. Mm -hmm. um, so, people that are, are very judgmental, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Most of the time, like, I look back at myself. I judged a lot of people whenever I was in my late teens, early 20s, because mm-hmm. like, I thought I was better than everybody. And it wasn't that I voiced my opinion that way, but in my head, I thought I was smarter. In my head, I thought I was better, because at that age, you just think that you are. Yeah. You just have this, this fucking early 20s, in college, late teens, fucking slaying pussy, going after anything. I'm the man. I'm the man. <laughs> yeah. That mentality. Yeah. And you haven't quite had to pay, like, real bills. Mm-hmm. Your mom and dad still pay your cell phone bill. You still live at home. You don't have a ton of responsibility. Your responsibility is slaying pussy, playing video games, lifting weights, eating food, having kind of a job. Not a career, but a job. And it's like you don't have anything of real value yet. Mm -hmm. You're still finding yourself. You're still searching. You're still trying to find, like, what you want to do. And what you're really good at is is just all those things I just mentioned because mm-hmm. that's all you do. And I noticed that, like, most people, like Hannah's going through this because she's in her mid-20s, like all the people that were in high school and in college that were, like, the kind of very, I don't know how to say it, not uppity, but, like, thought they were the shit and, like, their shit didn't stink. Mm-hmm. Like, l- real life begins to happen a few years later. Mm-hmm. And then they start gaining weight. And then they start realizing and you start seeing some struggling. Mm-hmm. Life starts to hit people a little hard. Mm-hmm. Your parent, one of your parents might die. Something devastating is going to happen to you in your life and then all of a sudden, like... You, you, you watch it because everybody's on social media. You watch things happen, and you're like, okay, here it is. And that meanwhile, that person, whenever they were younger, was kind of an asshole. Mm-hmm. Like, and it occurs within, it occurred within me. It occurred within you and you, everybody. It happens to everybody. There's humbling moments that occur. And I think right now on the Internet is there is this large group of younger people that are feeding off of it because they haven't quite seen, like, the ignorance of life. Well, is it is it something then that's always been there? It's just now there's a platform that they they can all that we can see and hear it all now. Because you saw and you felt like how emotional I was about it. Because I'm like, don't be so stupid, kids. Mm-hmm. And now you know, slowing down for a second here. Yeah, I think that I think that that they they quite ha- they haven't quite felt life's deck. <laughs> yeah, but but they but they <laughs> but they feel like they need to tell the world about it. Yeah, to, like. Yeah, you know, and because I also believe that the world is much softer than it was. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of weak people out there. Like weak is in the sense of, uh, of just, I mean, being given a lot of stuff. Being given a lot of stuff and like being able to say something about saying someone without being in front of them and like getting punched in the fucking face for it. Oh yeah, good, great, great fucking point. You know, like a lot of people can't like that that negativity exists because no one's like nobody's getting socked in the fucking mouth, bro. Say that to someone's face instead of on your Insta story. Like, it's gonna be a whole different fucking outcome, bro. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I have been in quite a few fights. I've fucking got jacked in the face a couple of times, and I don't want to do it again. But then you get into another fight, and you get hit, and you're like, ooh, I kind of liked it this time. Yeah. I mean, I didn't I didn't get in many fights, but, like, I've seen fights, and I'm like, yeah, that guy shouldn't have fucking said that. You don't say got that. Got his ass beat it's for like the it. the dude that got whacked in the face with a twisted tea can. <laughs> you see that? Yeah, yeah. I did it's see that. fucking great. Yeah, keep running your mouth, you fucking <laughs> asshole. Like, that's kind of, that. that's, you're right, good point. Mm-hmm. Be, and, and my thing is, this is why I don't wish upon wish bad upon anybody. Mm-hmm. Bro, I know what bad feels like. Yeah, it's awful. It is very horrible. Mm-hmm. It's not fun whenever you think you're on top of the world and then everything comes crashing down. Mm-hmm. It's not fun. I don't wish bad upon people or I don't like, I don't want to talk negative like these young kids. Like, I, I want to talk sense into them. Mm-hmm. I want to be like, but you got the world by the fucking balls right now. Yeah. If you apply yourself to something positive and use all of your energy 
and everything that you have in you, all of your energy, the brain, the mind, the body, the soul, everything you got, and put it into something, it will create something that you will be like, holy fuck. Yep. It took me until I was 30 years old to do something like that, guys. Mm -hmm. And now we have what we have. And I'm like, I look and I'm like, all of this, you can harness it all. Like, I want to talk some sense into you. Like, two things that I will always say in life, fucking always work hard and don't do drugs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> two things. You do that, bro, you will be really good. You will find greatness in life. Yeah. And these young kids with all of these things going on, I'm like, yeah, dude, you're going to find out that life is not fair. You're going to find out that life is really hard. You're going to find out that there will be something that will legitimately fuck your life up. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be devastating. But the harder, the more, the, the more positive you look at life and the harder you work from an early age, the less of a blow that will feel. Mm -hmm. Like Dwayne Wade's kid. Dwayne Wade's like, bitch. I'm going to make you the hardest motherfucker I can. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make you so hard that when you get to the NBA and you have to play against some of these people that I had to play against, you're going to be like, <laughs> you're a pussy. My dad's tougher than you. Yeah. My old ass fucking dad. It's how I am with Adeline. If people knew how I raised Adeline, like legitimately know how I raised her, people would say that I'm not a good parent. People would say that uh, I'm too hard on her. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows the, what, what her and I had to go through. Like, we never really publicly said the intensity of it all. Mm -hmm. But that child is the way she is is because of how I raised her. You're not breaking that fucking bitch. Nope. I was so hard on her, and I continue to be so fucking hard on her that it is ungodly mm -hmm. because she's going to face life. And, as, and she wants to do big shit in her life. So as life continues to come at her, and then as things occur and things get harder and she has to apply herself, if I do not put her in situations at a young age, whenever she gets to these things, they're going to devastate her. I want her to go and attack these things that are very difficult in life and look at them and be like, yeah, I can do that. And then whenever someone says something to her, or they try and beat her down, or they try and tear her down, she's going to be like, that's all you got. That's all you got. Okay, fuck you. I'm just moving on. You're not even worth my time speaking back to you. My dad said more fucked up shit than you. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that's what I want her to say in her head. Yeah. So as a parent, and as someone who wants to see something great occur with her child, you have to find those barriers. There's going to be times that I push too far, and she's going to cry. She's going to feel beaten. But your job is to rebuild that and build her confidence and build her back up to do better. And you have to find that fine line so that it continues to grow and compound, and then she becomes a fucking savage. It's part of everything that goes on over there. Mm -hmm. It has to. That's how, that's how great things can occur. And then, because there's a lot of people like, dude, if you, if you are grown up in a situation where you never face adversity and you never face hard, ugly shit, what are you going to do when hard, ugly shit happens? What are you going to do? Break? Probably. What happens if you have kids, the people that rely on you to put food on their table, mm -hmm. and you become an alcoholic and don't show up to work and lose your job, and you still got two kids to feed? What are you going to do then? You're going to cry on social media. You're going to tell everybody how life, how fucking hard life is, and you want a pity party. You want people to feel bad for you. Fuck you. You got two kids that rely on you. You got people that rely on you. That's why I don't want to see bad upon anybody. Because what happens if you have people that rely on you? What happens if you have kids? What happens if you have a, a fucking company that has 36 fucking employees? What happens if you have things like this and all well, disappears? I want bad upon nobody. I want good. I want good because there are, because that's how greatness occurs in the world. And right now, if anybody hasn't noticed, 
The division is so strong. Mm -hmm. Dividing people. Like this whole fucking, the whole election thing. You divided into two groups, Trump and Biden. They did such a good job at dividing the whole entire country. It is like divided. So strong one side, so strong the other. Wow. Mm -hmm. Did a really good job of it. And now I think everybody realized that we're in a fucking big world of shit. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother story. I can't wait. You excited for your 600 bucks? Yeah. I remember Everybody's so pumped Trump vetoed that. He's like, fuck you, dickheads. Mm -hmm. I don't trust no, I don't trust any uh, no political figure anymore. I trust zero. Mm -hmm. It is the people against everybody else. For fucking sure. Wow. But I think that um, like I said, most important thing is it, they don't come out. Come on. I know. You got to put your hand further in there. Fingers got to go deeper. I'm all the way in there. I hit rock is, bottom. Isn't it like a... There it is. I think you have to get it from the top. You got to rub it. Uh, I see it's stuck in there. Oh, oh there, oh, it, there it is. Ooh. Man, I made her squirt. <laughs> These are some of my favorite flavors in here. I know. I know. They're... What about now? Is it coming out? Nope. No. No. <sighs> Did you get any cool gifts? Did you give any cool gifts? Yeah, I gave some cool gifts. I received some cool gifts. You actually received something cool. Yeah, yeah. All right, that's this is a big deal for Bob. Bob's a, Bob's a tough gift gift receiver. Fuck, I gotta remember what things I got. I gave I gave a great gift this year. I'm really pumped about it. Really, I, re I did something that uh, I was really excited because I was like, I need to do something cool, like because we are very fortunate. Mm -hmm. We make a great living. Uh, we work very hard for it. And I was like, I want to do something uh, that would, like, make a holiday for somebody. Because mm -hmm. like, who doesn't want to be excited or feel good on the holidays? Mm -hmm. Like, I want to do something. And I was like, uh, and then you, I think it was you, went to Dibs mm -hmm. and told me about the Benchmade display. Yeah. All these Benchmade knives. Huge display. Anybody that's a fucking knife guy, Benchmade's great knives. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, oh, man, I can't wait to go see it. I, like, fucking left and went and looked at the <laughs> like little kids. Same day. <laughs> I did same day. I was like, I'm going to look at the knives. <laughs> so I go over there, and it's this fucking huge case. And I'm like, oh, man, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> so I uh, – and I'm sitting there. I'm like, you know what? You know what would be cool? Like, get a, I should get these – get knives for people. Yeah. And these knives are, like, fucking – they're anywhere from 150 to $300 a knife. Mm -hmm. And I'm like – yeah, I was like, but I can't just get, like, knives for people that, like, I can't just get, like, one or two. Like, that's, like, it's a huge gift. Yeah. It's a huge gift. So I got one for every male in the family. <laughs> nice. <laughs> all, everybody on my, on my side that I see at Christmas time, yep. all the males, benchmates. Fucking right. Went to Hannah's family, everybody, on, every male that was there on Christmas Eve, benchmates. Bench kids, benchmates. No kid, no kid. I couldn't do it. <laughs> Because I was like, how cool of a gift as a guy who doesn't want to get a fucking sick knife. It's a great gift. It's an awesome gift. It's like so exciting to have a knife, like mm -hmm. a, a new brand. Because these knives are also knives that like you rarely would buy yourself. Usually, Never buy yourself. No, usually this is a knife that you get for like a fucking bachelor, like uh, uh, as a bachelor or not a bachelor, as a fucking groomsman. A groomsman gift. I did that for my groomsman. Killer knives. Yep. You know what I mean? Something that's on the higher end side that's that's that like holds serious value. Mm -hmm. Um so I was like, yep. So I bought I, I bought a bunch of them. Eleven in total. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and uh and I was like, cool. So Hannah's like, what the fuck did you do? I'm like, I'm so excited to do this. Yeah. This is gonna be great. And she's like how much were they? I'm like, none of your fucking business. Don't Mind your business, it. woman. Back to wrapping presents. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so Emmy and I wrapped them all up, and I picked I picked out which knife went to which person. Yeah. None of them were the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, and we went to Christmas Eve. We went to Hannah's uh, Hannah's brother's house for Christmas Eve, and uh, her, I guess my brother-in-law, uh, her sister's husband, mm -hmm. he's 
big hunter, whole night, and I'm like, bro's gonna be fucking stupid pumped. Yeah, it's like I can't wait to see this because like if I if somebody gave me a benchmate, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna give you yes. a hug. I would hug that person. That would go right in the pocket. <laughs> so so uh, so he opens it and he, I give everybody a gift. They're like, what are you doing giving me gifts? It's, we're supposed to do kid gifts, For not kids, like yeah. not everybody here. I'm like, only males got these. Yeah. And uh, he opens it up and he's like, bro. I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, you got me a bench made. I'm like, yeah. Yes. He's like, he's like shocked. Like, someone, people that love me don't get me a bench made. I don't get myself this. Yeah, he's so excited. And uh, does this mean you love me? He was fucking pumped because I gave him like a, a sick hunting knife. Nice. Fucking nasty. Yeah. Like, it was my favorite knife out of the whole entire group. I was like, he's get, got to get it. Yeah. And uh, dude was stupid pumped, and Hannah's sister was texting Hannah, and she said that he's like, he has not stopped looking at this knife all weekend. I'm like, yes, <laughs> fucking great. That's awesome. And then, uh, and then uh, Hannah's cousin's husband, uh, he also is really into him, and he's look, he's sitting there like next to me on the couch, like kids are opening gifts, and he's looking at, he's like, looking, at, he's like, you got me this, I'm like yeah, he's like. Thank you. <laughs> like, so, like, astonishingly surprised. So he's surprised. Like, he's like, I can't believe I didn't get you anything. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I'm just kidding. But I'm like, I, I, I was so excited because r- giving a great gift mm-hmm. is way better than receiving a great gift. Agreed. It was so fucking great. It made my day because those dudes were stupid fucking pumped. Everybody was pumped. They were like, bro, like, because they're ridiculous knives. And just fucking blown away. Yeah. So excited. Man, great gifts. My brother's. My brother got my second favorite knife. Yeah. And uh, and he opened it up and he's like, it, it, his is another hunting knife. Yeah. And uh, and on the on the on the back end of it, there's a thing you open. You can you can use it to skin the deer. And he opened it up. He's like, thanks for the hunting knife. I can't wait to. I'm not going to skin anything <laughs> or gut anything. He's like, school. I'm like, you can use it to open envelopes. Yeah. He's like, great idea. I'll do that. <laughs> He's fucking, he was busting my balls, but it was good. That's awesome. Yeah, he was excited. <laughs> but like, giving, a, giving a great gift is way better yeah. than receiving, I think. I like the, the unexpected gift is... It was, it's awesome. You're right. An unexpected gift mm-hmm. is very cool. Yeah. Yep. Very cool. And... Uh, and regardless because uh because because hannah's very uh she doesn't really pay attention to the finances of things too much like i make sure i take care of all the bills it very we have very very uh gender specific roles of the household Mm -hmm. i take care of all the money she takes care of anything that needs love and care and a woman's touch yep i split wood pussy and make money (laughs) She takes care of the kids and sucks my dick. That's toxic. You fucking asshole. What's wrong with that? I'm I don't know anybody that wouldn't like that. Those Shane, roles. Shane's offended. I'm offended. Shane's like, Shane's like, I like that. I'd like to do that too. That's what I think. It's like it, that's how it's supposed to be. For Christ's sakes. Like, I think that these young men. That we were that we were speaking of these younger these younger guys that are on the line and and uh, these videos about all of this stuff and the and the the, the judging and the uh, the constant reviews, mm-hmm. I think they need more masculinity. Yeah, I think they need to go split some wood. Mm-hmm. I think they need to run a chainsaw. They need to be gifted a knife. They like lifting weights. Yes. They like that. That's look, tough. That's masculine. That's tough. They like looking good. Yeah, that's masculine. That's good. We're all, they're on to something. Yeah. Stop judging a CrossFitter. Don't make fun of them. Mm-mm. It's okay if they're. No, they're not. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Stop judging anybody like that. Like it's supposed to be exciting. Like I mean, maybe you might like steroids. You might like cross over to the dark side one day and be like, man, I can't believe I ever talked shit on Tren. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should do some Anna draw. So cool. It's great. <laughs> Maybe I should start taking dick pills and doing blow, too. I don't know. <laughs> don't do that. That was a joke. Yeah. No, don't do I mean, that. There is a time and a place. No, there's but... not. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, but, no, I think maybe, like, the masculine thing. I I, I mean, I think that uh, they might, you know, that might be a great thing that you get involved in. Doing something like that. Mm-hmm. Like a hobby. 
like a masculine hobby. Yeah. I like that. Mm-hmm. You might like it. And even if you don't, now at you, least now you know. You know. You know. But don't hate someone for liking it. Yep, but don't hate me for liking the split wood pussy, make money. <laughs> Who doesn't like sniping a good pussy? <laughs> Get in there. <laughs> underhooks. Oh, the underhook. Yeah. Yeah, really get in there. The underhooks are when you're all fired up. Yeah. Ass down, underhooks in. Yep. She can't run away. She can't squirm away. Nope. You're yep. locked in. Locked in. Uh-huh. You'll be fucking from top of the nose all the way down covered. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked up bastards. Yeah. <clears throat> Unexpected gifts are great. That's I really awesome. loved it. Yeah. yeah. I got a, uh, my, uh, we slept at my mom's uh, Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. So we all woke up together. Uh, my sister came over bright and early with oh, my nice. nephew. So like we all opened like Christmas morning as a family. Oh, no shit. Yeah, it was like pretty back cool. back in the day. It was, it was cool. Like, <laughs> like my dad just being like. Stoned at seven a.m. That and just the the t- the dad saying after dad saying and really? like how proud he is now. Like before, like he wouldn't even think about. It and we'd bust his balls. Now we're just like I can't wait to hear the next one. Oh. <laughs> like turn the TV on. The big thing was like the the Yule log. He always put the Yule log on. No shit. You know, like it's on that one channel every yep, year. Yep. Well, it's not on the fucking channel anymore. So he. All morning bitching about where the Yule, Yule log is. He's like, "Yeah, so and so bought him out. Now you got to fucking pay for him." Like, <laughs> dad saying after dad saying, and uh, we finally found it on YouTube and we like airplayed it oh, to that. Okay. He's like, "Jesus Christ!" He's like, "I'm not fucking looking at that." He's like, How, there, "Where's the dog? There should be a dog in front of the, in the Yule log." Oh my god! Then like we're one present in. He comes in like trash bag. Did he really? Yeah. Here. Right in the bag. No That's shit. That's that glitter paper right in the bag. Uh, where did you get it from, Bob? I wonder. <laughs> oh, my God. It was uh, it was one after another. It was so good. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was cool. My dad uh, my dad got my mom like a new wedding band. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice. She, she lost hers like years ago. And like he just, well, they picked it out together and stuff. But like he was like really pumped like to, to give her that. Nice. Yeah. It's a good gift. Yeah, it's a great gift. Good gift. Yep. And then uh, we were all done, like, unwrapping everything. My mom overdid it. Like, oh, th- really? Dude, there was it was like we were three, like, 10-year-olds. Like, it was gifts fucking everywhere. Like, they were carrying – I was sitting on the couch. They were carrying presents down the stairs for, like, over an hour. Like, oh, no. setting everything up. I'm like, Jesus, Mom. And uh, we were all done, and I got my brother a uh, new iPhone. Oh, no shit. Yeah, so, like, everything's open. The kid is, like, he don't expect anything. He's, like, the kindest-hearted kid you've ever met. So, like, I gave him that, and he opened up, like, a case. It was a a case for it first, and he's, like, he's, like, no. And and then he opened up the box. He's, like, dude. Brand new iPhone. Bro, blew his mind. (laughs) Like, he thanked me probably 45 fucking times. Oh, fuck yeah. You know, but uh, that, that was cool, being able to do something like that. Because he doesn't expect it. He don't yep. expect my parents to get it. My parents wouldn't even try to get something like that around the holidays. Nope. You know, it's a big deal. And uh, so that that was cool. That was a, the coolest gift I gave, I think. It's awesome. Yeah. Yep. It's a good one. Yeah. It's, it's, it is that, like you said, like giving, a, giving an unexpected gift is massive. Mm-hmm. Massive. Especially... Um, the unexpected gift but having a good gift to give yeah like being uh, having some thought into it is huge Mm -hmm. huge yeah my mom's good with that like the thoughtful gifts yeah like it's a lot of gifts but it's a lot of like small gifts that just like mean like a ton yeah like she got me this uh it's like this picture it's like a tree and it's like a saying on it and i like read it and like i didn't i couldn't think of what it was from i was like oh that's beautiful saying and it's like a Beatles song, right? Yeah. But it's what I didn't even realize because, like, just in the moment, it was what me and my mom like danced to at my wedding. And mm. It was like this cool thing. She's like, "I know it look really cool in the house," and like, I'm like, "Mom, like, great fucking gift." Good like, gift. Yeah. Good gift. Yeah. Hannah's good at stuff like that too. Yeah. Yeah, like making sure, like, uh, at least, at least for me. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I got cool stuff. Mm-hmm. I got great stuff. Hey, it got me a. I didn't bring it. I was pissed because I was. I left the house in a little bit of a rush this morning, and a cool coffee cup. You know how the people are making all those mugs. Yeah. Yeah. She got me a We the People win, which is sick. The nice. Neighbor makes them. So yeah. Really cool. It was cool because it's personalized. So. Mm-hmm. And then. Um, I got every dad gift under the sun. Yeah. Because I told her I wanted a bunch of dad shit. Yeah. That's what I wanted. One of the boots. I need new. I needed new New Carolinas. Did you get it's some? Not, yeah, mine aren't waterproof anymore. Mm. The soles. It's been two years, so just just seeps. wear and tear on the side. So now I got fucking super stiff boots. Yeah, I gotta get them broken in. <sighs> yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's a bitch. I know, because I went to Dibs when I bought all those knives. They had there's some new stuff out there that's pretty cool. I was looking at them. However, I gave I, I asked a million questions to the to the boot guy there because mm-hmm. uh, these new Carolinas that were there, way softer, like look super cool, different colored, like they're they're a gray colored. Mm-hmm. And he's like, listen, he's like, these are these are the most comfortable boot you'll put on and be able to just start walking in. He's like, no break in period, no nothing. I'm like, nice. I was like, that's great. He's like, one catch, and I'm like, what's the catch? What's the gig? And he's like. They wear way faster. And I'm like, really? Uh, and he's like, and they're more expensive. He's like, so not only are they more expensive, he's like, they're gonna be comfy out of the gate, but he's like, they're not gonna they're not gonna last like these ones. And I'm yeah. like, mm mm. Right. I had a problem with it right then. Yeah. I might get a pair just to to feel good mm-hmm. or try out, but I don't know. I can't deviate. Can't deviate. No, because you like in your head you're like, all right, I get one to two years out of this style mm-hmm. and yeah. right any any more i get close to i get about a year and a half mm-hmm. out of my boots because i don't wear them every fucking day and work in them yeah i used to get seven months out of my boots when i did when i did landscape <laughs> <laughs> and yeah it was like that's all you get but uh no got new boots uh so whenever we went to the mall together you yeah. and mike uh-huh. we got uh those love sack foot sacks yeah from foot, the love sacks. Sack, foot sacks from the love sack store yeah so the gift that I did for all the girls was I, I got them all earrings, like nice diamond earrings, and I got them all a foot sack. Yeah. So there was three foot sacks and then three pairs of earrings. And, like, Adeline, bro, because I got a crazy deal on, on earrings at the one jewelry store. Mm-hmm. And, like, she wanted – she'd been wanting a pair because she can't wear – shitty earrings yeah like she's allergic to all that shit so if she puts anything but like uh i think like but real gold in her ears or whatever like they swell up and all infected and shit Mm -hmm. so she hasn't worn earrings for years Mm -hmm. and now that she's fucking 13 and likes boys and wants to look pretty and all this shit got her earrings and like she's fucking smoked yeah all weekend just like how good do they look Hey, Dad, shit. Look, like, fuck. Check these out. It's like, God damn it. But it, it's such a great feeling. But the foot sack thing was huge. Was it? Holy fuck. Yeah. Because it got different ones and each one had something. And uh, and they just, they went nuts. So it was worth carrying those three foot sacks around They're the huge. mall. They were yeah. fucking huge. It's I looked fucking... like such a jerk off walking through the mall. Well, I had like you, the... you bought three. I bought one. Mike bought one. Yeah. Like, we walked into the store, and, like, it looks like they didn't see customers all day, and then we come in and buy five foot sacks. Yeah. I'm tra- we're trying to buy them. We're like, I'm like, kiss the one I want. And she's like, you can't. And she's like, okay. And then she's like, you can't buy that one. I'm like, why not? And she's like, it's the floor model. And I'm like, I don't give a fuck what model it is. I want the fucking foot sack. Yeah. I want this for my kid. Like, I'm paying fucking all this money for this fucking blanket mm-hmm. to one I want. And I had to pick a new one. But uh, it just fucking smoked. They loved it. And Hannah's like, uh, Adeline's a huge blanket person. Yeah. You go into Adeline's room, Adeline legitimately has in her room quite like a dozen blankets. Mm. She has like this ladder display like basic white bitches have, and on each rung there's a, blanket. A, there's a blanket. So it's like a display. Yeah. They're not being used. They're just for show. And then like all the blankets she has had over the years, she hoards them. Mm. Some are just on there to look pretty. These are the ones she likes to use at this time of day. This is the one she uses for school. And I feed into it because yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you got something. I'm going to I'm gonna pay money. Just I'm going to get you a new blanket. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the, but Hannah, the foot sack thing, she's like, she was all excited because she got the, it's a real plush one, mm-hmm. real super soft. 
And she's like, man, this is really nice. She used it the one night. And they're heavier. They are, yeah. Yeah, they're kind of heavy. And she wrapped herself up, and she was out, like, fucking right away. Yeah. Next morning, she wakes up. She's like, I love that blanket. I'm like, nice. <laughs> fucking, like, it's like, score. Yeah, the earrings she got, people were complimenting her on the earrings. So I'm like, fucking I Man, had, nailed I scored, it. I scored major points. Yeah, gifts of the year. Yeah, I was really pumped. Good job. I usually don't do that. No. Usually I'm like number three or four on the list of giving gifts. Mm -hmm. I fucking won this year. Nailed it. Yeah. Super excited. Good job. Mm -hmm. I also won uh, most ham sandwiches eight. Um, <laughs> that's a that's a big oh, yeah. a big accomplishment. Yeah, I like ham sandwiches. I like horseradish too. Do you guys like horseradish? Yep. I like it. It's kind of hot. Yeah. I like spicy shit. No one fucking made ham. No one. I'm not, and I'm not afraid to say it, and my family hear me say it, but no one made ham. And I'm upset about it. No one made a ham. No one made a ham. I know. I feel kind of like, I feel offended for you. I was offended. I feel like. Like, if, if my grandmother was around for that meal and she didn't see a ham, like, Nan always made a ham. What'd you have? It was like an assortment of stuff, which like it was good. I wanted ham though, like we like a couple Italian meals thrown in there, like some lasagna. What's the Italian thing at Christmas time? Can I ask? I, I don't, don't know. know. I'm Italian. Yeah, I'm a. I, I have Italian. I think it's non-Italian families making Italian food at Christmas because they're like tired of holiday food. Yeah, is that what it is? I think so. I'm confused. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Fuck! What did we do? Yeah, we did chicken. So why didn't anybody make a ham? I don't know. I guess they don't. I don't know. My mom said she. she's like, oh, I'm not really like a ham person. What kind of person doesn't make a ham at Christmas? I don't know. That's what I said. And then her mom. <laughs> I can't came, keep it. I wanted to fuck with you. So I well, went, I'm just going to feed into this. So well, no, I'm pissed. Too. I'm pissed. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not like I should have said something when I was there. <laughs> you fucks. <laughs> you fucks. I don't go home if Kim doesn't have a ham. How far I could take it to be an asshole right now because everybody's like, we don't cook a ham either, or this or that. Yeah, right. I, 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 I have to have ham. I, even I, if I like the cold. I like a ham when it's cold and like you make a sandwich the day after and I will and the eggs and I will cook half a ham mm -hmm. just to smell it. Yeah. If I was dieting through it, mm -hmm. if I, like years ago, I'd still cook the motherfucker. Even if I couldn't eat it, just so I could smell it, because <laughs> it's such a nostalgic thing for me, and yeah. then feed like the kids and the neighborhood and make sandwiches for people. It feeds a hundred people easy. <laughs> they do, dude. Yeah, fucking, we have so much ham at the house. I ate a ton. Yeah, it must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I know what Kim's making for dinner later. <laughs> fucking pissed, mom. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I'm kidding, I love you. I love you, mom. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Oh, dude, no, ham's huge. I, and, then, I, and then, like, I'm a picky eater. Like, everyone, I, you have I, to I'm, understand. I'm, I'm surprised that you are a little pissed because, yeah. like, like, you're I'm, not a huge ham guy, but one sandwich is you have to have at least one at Christmas. I don't get real excited about holiday meals and and other dinners at people's houses because I'm picky. I am a fucking picky eater. Oh, yeah. So, like, her mom's house, we did, like, we did their Christmas Eve the night before Christmas Eve because okay. yeah. her parents had off. Yeah. And it was like, it was like a ton of different food. It was like lasagna. It was uh, like random appetizers. Then a seafood like casserole that I'm like, I'm not trying that. I'm, I'm sorry. No, like, it it's fine. not. It, Fuck off. Yeah. See, like, you're either into that or not. I, I'm not into it. You put it. seafood and casserole in the same fucking name. I'm like, no fucking way. Casseroles are tough for me. Yeah. I'm a hard, I, I don't, I'm yep. not a big casserole guy. And her family's great. They don't push anything on me because they know I'm a, I'm you're a picky eater. Picky eater. They've been fucking 30 years. Yeah. Yep. And then, then chicken parm at my mom's. And then, oh, chicken parm's good. Yeah. Chicken parm was really good. And then, uh, Christmas Day, we went to her sister's and I, I grilled fillets. Oh. So that was good. Fillets, baked potato, a couple other things. Yeah. 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 But no ham. No, I thought I'd see it at one house. I was at five fucking houses or three houses. No hams. Nope. Zero ham. See, I am massive with 
with all with the traditional shit. Mm -hmm. I'm so fucking ingrained into it. Thanksgiving has to have a big turkey. Yeah. Christmas has to have a ham. Mm -hmm. Have to. You have to. There's no getting a fucking around it. No. Yeah. And then, uh, but like the ham sandwich thing for me is massive because I do not eat ham any other time of the year. I won't fucking touch a ham sandwich any other time of the year. No fucking go. Mm -mm. Don't want it. Don't want nothing to do with it. Nope. Not never. But at Christmas time, I want a ham sandwich with lettuce, horseradish. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my dad likes horseradish. Love horseradish. Yeah. Yep, have to have it. And then, um, I mean, big thing at New Year's, New Year's Eve, it's always nice. My mom would, uh, she started cooking uh, like a big prime rib or uh, uh, or she would, that was a big one. Yeah. Bake in the oven <clears throat> a tenderloin. Oh, yeah. Like, so like a filet tenderloin, then have it all cooked the way. I like those. She would do that, too. So like a big piece of red meat mm -hmm. on Chris, on uh, New Year's Eve. New Year's, yeah. Yeah. That was it, though. My uncle would do that on, on Easter. He'd do a big filet tenderloin. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I want to learn how to cook? I would like to, maybe Bobby Flay would make me this. I love Bobby Flay. Yeah, like a, a rack of lamb. Yeah. I'd like to have that. I've only had Maybe lamb. you should tell Kim to learn how to make that. I will. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll yeah. pay for everything. Yeah. I mean, you will. I will. We will. It's some One of us is. Yeah, same money. And both. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I've only had lamb once, and it was like, I didn't think it was prepared the right way. I, I think that it definitely is one of those meats that has to be done very well. So m a big thing is, is, you know, now that we go to so many fucking restaurants, I am going to say that whenever uh, whatever occurs, whatever is occurring is gone and we can go back to restaurants, hopefully that does occur. I'm definitely going to indulge in many more things. Mm -hmm. If this whole bullshit lockdown stuff has taught me anything, um, it has taught me that I need to live a little more. I think a lot of people, do you think a lot of people feel that way? For sure. What do you think? Yeah. I think or, or that, they or they're not realizing that that's what they need to be doing. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, we, we talked about it. We might have even said on the last podcast that we often like we get ahead, like with things like even with work, with at home, like, oh, yeah, that's two months from now, three months oh, from yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And no, I don't I don't think people even realize they're like, I should be living right now. I, and, and I think that uh, right now everybody's living through the Internet. Mm -hmm. It's like everyone's waiting waiting out life until what they think is normal is back like th they're just waiting it out they're like oh yeah once this is done i can be happy again and this again when in reality it's like i mean i felt like that i felt like that you, a few times do you think that uh like the, uh, there was that thing that ian smith posted it's like this famous thing where uh, I'll, I'll i'll get it up word for word so we have it here and i don't fuck it up I think it was on his page. So let me pull it up. Yeah. What? Did they fucking take it down? No fucking way they took it down. I think they took it down. No shit. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe I saved it. There's a bunch of pictures of my legs. <laughs> Bunch of progress pictures, Christmas pictures. Took a ton of pictures on Christmas. Hmm. I don't think I saved it. Fuck. Uh, I'll look it up on the internet real quick here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. God damn it. So, like, I reposted that. Do you have a picture you tagged me in last night? Like, the pump cover? Yeah, we need to bring back orange pump covers. Well, yeah, but, like, everyone's, like, commenting back in my DMs, like, oh, look at Seth's legs. Look at those. And I'm like, I'm just sending them pictures of my legs. I'm like, what about my legs, dickhead? <laughs> like, I'm, I'm literally sending them pictures from, like, before Iron Man when they were, like, nice Shattered. and, yeah. 
I just fucking leg pick. Dickheads. <laughs> no, this this saying it says hard times create strong men. Strong men create good times. Good times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. And we're about to be entering into hard times. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people are just waiting for this to go away. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are just waiting for things to get back to normal. And I look around and I'm thinking to myself, if everybody didn't wake up right now and start doing a whole lot of good for your community and start standing up and saying, fuck this bullshit with the lockdown, keep your business open, go support your community, stand with them, don't say, hey, it'll be fine for you. Like, bills don't go away. Mm -hmm. And I think right now we have so many weak people that just want to get back to some level of normalcy because it's been generational. Mm -hmm. Like we we have been built into this and right now we're at a point where hard times are going to come. Like they are upon us for sure. And if you are not prepared and you're not willing to take a stand with your community and everything that we do on a daily basis to make sure our community knows we're here for them, go support them, go buy things, Go do whatever we can to support them. Money, letting people know, whatever. Like, we're in for a fucking ride. Yeah. I think a lot of people woke up whenever the whenever the Democrats uh, put out that the, the co- coronavirus relief package. Mm-hmm. And it had uh, $900 billion and $232 billion were for the American people. Mm-hmm. The other, what, 668 were four other countries. Mm-hmm. Or four other countries and other special interests. Yeah. That's when shit got scary. Mm-hmm. Because that's not, that's not their money that they're giving away. That's your money. Yeah. That's my tax dollars. It's your tax dollars. It's your tax dollars. They're going to give you 600 fucking bucks. If that didn't piss you off, I don't know what will. Mm-hmm. I tell you who is my new favorite person of all time. All time. New favorite person. Kevin Costner. No, it's going to be tough to beat this one. Okay. Dave Portnoy. (laughs) Fuck yeah, dude. He's awesome. David Portnoy. Bro, the shit he's been doing the last three weeks, four weeks. My favorite person of all time. Yep. Hands down, like, I loved how hard he worked to become such an arrogant prick. Yeah. I loved it. The dude put in the fucking work. The dude put his dick on the chopping block every single day. Good, bad, ugly, no matter what dude kept coming. Okay? Like, building Barstool Sports. Then the pizza reviews. And everybody gave him shit about pizza reviews, but never stopped doing pizza reviews. Just fucking hammered through it. Just kept going. People busting his balls about this. People trying to fuck with him and him going after Roger Goodell, the NFL. All the bullshit. Right now... That dude in the Barstool Fund and what he's doing for small businesses with his own money and building a foundation, favorite person of all time. You can't beat that motherfucker. That dude is all-time favorite person. Mm -hmm. Right now, like us doing what we did for Zoe, it's right there. Every morning we walk in, we see it. It reminds me every morning that we... And our followers and our supporters did something massive for a family that needed help whenever there wasn't anything else. Mm -hmm. Whenever they felt like the world was against them, when they felt like everything was on their shoulders and they didn't know what to fucking, what to do, there was a group of misfits, roughnecks, Mm -hmm. that got together and did something great for them and took that weight, as much of the weight that we could take off their shoulders, we removed it so that they could focus on their family. Because we don't have problems, just more work to do. That family had a real problem. Mm -hmm. These people today have a real problem. And whenever you have someone like Dave Portnoy, whenever somebody challenged him, did you see see how it all started? Yep. Challenged him, if you're such a badass, put your money where your mouth is. You, you fucking woke us. Uh, you, you pissed off a very awake giant. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, you don't say that to him. No, <laughs> and he comes out and he sp- he gives he put half a million dollars yep. of his own money to start it. Half a million dollars of his own money. To then he start made the it? other guy do it too. The guy that challenged him put half a million in. Yeah, because he said, "All right, motherfucker," and now the dude is on a relentless fucking terror to do as much good as he can because our fucking government's shit in the bed. Mm-hmm. What a badass. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what are they up to? Over, if, if, over, that's over one, six million, right? Uh, yeah, I over seven. So. Over seven now. It, every time I look, I'm like, it's Holy another million, bro. And to prove his point, he FaceTimes these people and puts it on his Instagram. Yeah, all of them, mm-hmm. dudes. Legitimately, like we did something great as a group, and everybody that supported and bought a Zoe shirt and donated money to that family, you should feel very special about what you did because you changed the life of a family. You change the life of a family. Without what you did, it wouldn't be what it is. What he is doing is that for many, many people. Whole businesses. There's not just one family in a business. There's the owners and there's all the fucking employees. These, these owners were losing everything so that their employees still had money. These owners were investing more and more money into everything, losing everything to help their people because their help people help them build them to who they are. And this motherfucker comes in. Somebody challenged him and fucking went ham. Mm-hmm. Dude is on a, like, I love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Favorite person in the world. Yeah. He's actually helping the NFL, too, because uh, Josh Allen, quarterback for the Bills. Yeah. He has a shirt that says Built Different. Built Different, yeah. yeah. And awesome. he wore it. Uh, Josh Allen wore the shirt. Posted really? it. The Bills posted it on their page. Yep. So it, it was pretty cool just to see how he's helping everybody and getting people involved. Dude's awesome. Yep, a lot of good. That's the good for uh, and and <laughs> for as much of an asshole as he is and what he's done and all that and what people think of him, you, you can't beat that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Well, and and you can see the difference in in what he's doing and like other like bullshit things that people try to do to like make it look like they're doing good. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like these people are getting this money already. Like the oh, mon- yeah. the money comes in, the money he FaceTimes them, the money is wired transferred. Their, I can't remember that lady's name. Yeah. He gets her, they find as much money as whatever they needed. Yep. It's and it's done in a way I'm imagining that it's done in a way to make sure it's done for the longevity of whatever is occurring yep. is yeah. occurring. Exactly. There's definitely one accountant or a couple accountants on that account. Yeah. And then the, his manager is whoever's dealing with it directly. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then he just FaceTimes them to thank them and let them know that they're getting the money and all this stuff. Yeah. That dude has a phenomenal team. Yep. Dude has a phenomenal team. It's crazy how many people they have just dirt, the different channels that they hit. They're get, they're into betting. He's in the stock market. and It's, it's yeah. just nuts. Bro, their billboards on, on the turnpike are hilarious. Yeah. Who's t- who's billboards? <laughs> Barstool Sport has billboards yeah, on the because of the PA it's sports book. Por- it's Portnoy and uh, Big Cat. Big Cat, <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> bro. Big Cat's in his shades with his turtleneck sweater and like the jacket over, dude. Yeah, <laughs> the I saw two of them. One of them was uh, oh fuck, what did it say? Or like, there's still time left, at, like in the game, like, the, and they're both on the edge of their seat. Oh my god. <laughs> And then like PA sports betting and like all this shit. And then, oh, I forget what the other one was coming home, but it was, <laughs> they were awesome. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't care. I, I no longer care what anybody, like, no, the dude, the dude right now, like, when you do good for people like that, like doing what we did for Zoe changed, changed who I am as a person. It, it changed me even more than I already was. Like going through all the bullshit with my ex and what my kids and I went through, and, and, and how I had to develop into a different person. Like, I had to shed skin to become a new person. Whenever we did that with Zoe, like, it even woke me up to... It, we, the hard-working motherfucker, the saying, we don't have problems, just more work to do. It was something that we had in what I believed, because I was like, I couldn't imagine if something really bad happened to my kids. Mm-hmm. Because I had to take care of my kids. I couldn't imagine what it would be like. And, like, I don't have problems. Like, people have real problems in the world. I just got to go to work in the morning. I just got to go to work. I just got to wake up and be me. I just got to wake up and work as hard as I can for the people that I love and everybody. That's all I have to do. I don't have problems. Shut the fuck up, Seth. You don't have a problem. Your kids are healthy. You have two hands, two feet, your able body, your health. Just go to work. Shut the fuck up. Work harder. If you don't like what you do, you have to change it. That's how I talk to myself. That's why I talk the way I do. 
And then, over a year later, someone close to our family here, their kid comes down with uh, one of the most rare forms of brain cancer. Holy fuck, it actually hit directly home. It, like, hit home. And, like, no matter the, the hundreds of thousands, it's going to cost over $100,000 for the treatment because, you know, not covered by insurance. Because it's a, it's, it's a specific, special type of treatment. Family has to move away because the treatment isn't done here in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. They did chemo treatments here even before that. Three-year-old little girl. Like, you got a fucking problem in your house now. All those things that you thought were problems in your life somehow just go, they're not problems. They were just work. Problem is when your kid has a fucking tumor that's potentially going to kill them at three years old. That kid's never going to grow up in the same environment a healthy child would. That kid might not make it to find out what it's like to have their first kiss. They won't go to the prom. They won't ever even have the disappointment of being told no from another person. They won't even have the opportunity to lose the spelling bee. They won't even have the opportunity to fucking lose at the things that you thought were devastating as a child in your healthy, wonderful life. They won't even have the opportunity, let alone all the great things that can occur as well. Getting to pass your driver's permit, getting to get your driver's license, go on your first date, first kiss, all these wonderful things. Kid's fucking three years old. You got a fucking problem now. That's why you don't have problems, just work. It was just work. That family, the mom and dad were like, holy fuck, here we go. Mm -hmm. Like that day, everything that you thought you had a problem with disappeared. And all your focus became onto your child. And every person that's listening to this podcast that tr contributed to that, that helped donate or bought a Zoe t-shirt, changed the course of that family's life. Mm -hmm. Given a small percentage chance of survival for that child... And the parents had to cope with it to understand that they might lose their child. But a group of people, a group of people came together and donated. We made over $50,000, $54,000 in T-shirt sales in, a, in what, two days, three days? And on top of that, the other $40,000-plus donated through the fund. So almost $100,000 for that family to focus on her. The mom and dad cried thanking Mike and us and everything that we did and every person. They were like, I don't even know how to say thank you. But they were able to now focus on her. So even they, that whole time, they didn't, they, they, the leaves of work mm -hmm. and everybody contributing and taking care of it and doing all these things, they're able to focus and cope with the fact that they might lose their daughter, but they have to understand all the good. And they're like, we have to conceptualize the good that occurred right now, even though we might lose one of the most special things in our life. We were saying those things years ago, and then it hit home. And our job was to deliver at that moment, and all of everybody listening, like I said, you should be very proud. And this is the good that can occur from all the good shit that's in your life. $5 made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. Donating 5 or $10 made a huge difference because it was thousands of people. And same thing going forward with what he's doing. There's problems out there. People have real fucking problems. Mm -hmm. And if we as a, as a community don't stand together, if we as units don't stand together, it's fucked. Yep. And again, that's why, like I said, changed me. I don't want nothing bad for fucking nobody. Like, I, I don't want to see nothing bad. I want people to be fucking hardworking, ignorant, tough, thick-skinned motherfuckers. That's what I want to see. Needs to get back to that. It needs more of it. Yeah, for sure. It's wild. But Dave Portnoy, huge fan. Huge fan. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. So uh, on to a new note, Bob. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I saw Yellowstone was on, and I just haven't sat down to watch it yet. Yeah. It started, I was sitting on the couch getting ready to uh, start my day. Mm -hmm. 
I sat there for quite a bit. It was probably like 10 o'clock the one morning. I was playing with the kids and then hanging out with SJ there. And then uh, on the one channel, season one, episode one was about to come on. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck me, dude. I was planning on training. I was planning on all this stuff. And I'm like, I can't get wrapped up. So I started scrolling past like to see how long it was on. It was playing all of them. Yeah. All of them were about to play. Mm -hmm. All the seasons. And I'm like, God <laughs> damn it. I didn't watch it, but no, uh, I didn't. told Hannah, I was like, hey, I was like, this is the show that Bob and Mike talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get into it. I got to. Yeah. She left it on while I was running around doing because I did a bunch of dad duties around the house, and she left it on. And I just kept gl seeing glimpses of everything. Sick, right? Really cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. <laughs> Kevin Costner's my my favorite person on the planet. Oh, really? Yeah, big Kevin Costner fan. Big Kevin Costner fan. I I never knew how big of a fan I was until I realized that every single one of his movies I'm a fan of. Yeah, he uh, he fucks. Yeah, he did. Oh, he, he definitely sure. lays pipe. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kevin Costner. Um, I think uh, Dances with Wolves was one of was like one of my fucking old man's all time favorite movies. So mm -hmm. I saw a lot when I was a kid. And then, uh, yeah, all of them. Sick houses, like he had sick houses. Oh, really? His Colorado ranch has like four homes on the ranch, like two lakes, hidden hot tub room under the master bedroom. It's behind a waterfall. What? Yeah, it was like a floor. They like pop the floor open in the master bedroom, downstairs, hot tub and like like rocks surrounding you and then your view was behind a waterfall. Under the bedroom. Under the bedroom. He has a huge dick. It was a sick bedroom too. Dude, like he, he definitely has a fucking hog. Yeah. You can't do stuff like that unless those things He might not have a huge you, hog, but he definitely fucks. Yeah. Yeah. If you're not good if you're not good in the bedroom, none of that shit matters. You can't have that unless you unless you unless you, yeah. you fuck. Yep. Bruce got a, a grotto under his master bedroom. Yeah, it's sick. In Colorado. Yeah. You can rent it out for 250 grand a week. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out. Oh, of yeah. Here. Yeah, but we, I found out, like, ever, like, what is watching this? Yellowstone. Wait, wait. <laughs> what were you doing? How'd you find all this information? Well, out? I started, I wanted to learn as much about Kevin Costner as I could because I look up to him <laughs> like a role model. Like, based on his role in the Yellowstone, I'm like, this is the man I want to be someday. Is it Mr. Dutton? Yes. Yeah, John Dutton. John Dutton. Yeah, yeah. he's the fucking man. But uh, he's been playing these roles forever. This is who Kevin Costner is. Well, I mean, he, like I said, dances with wolves. He's, yeah. He, it's, that's, I was, what, like, 93, maybe? But, yeah. um, but he's he was a, in, he was, what was the other Western movie he was in? Oh, there was another one. Yeah, there was. Damn it. He plays a unique individual. He also, yeah. uh, the one movie, Rumor Has It. Yeah. He had sex with the <laughs> grandma, the mom, and the daughter. He had sex with all He fucks. Yep. Yeah. Um, Waterworld. The Postman. The dude's never done a sequel to Did any of his movies. Is that another fucking Kevin Costner it's thing? big fact. Talking about Open Range. Yeah. That's oh, it. yeah. Nice. He looked that up. Tin Cup. Tin no, Cup was huge. He, tin Cup. Yep. Fucking playing pipe. Robin Hood. Oh, man. Sick fucking movie. I loved Robin Hood. That was one of my favorite movies growing yep. up. Robin Wyatt Hood. Earp. Waterworld. 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 He was in Man of Steel. He's dead. Oh, yeah, he was. Get your shit right. I love Man of Steel. I know you Also do. on a on a farm. He was a farmer in that movie, yeah. too. Field of Dreams. Yep. And now there's a new fucking movie out. It's like a just a at home, you know, uh, it's because the theaters are closed and yeah, shit. Yeah. But it's based in fucking Montana again. <laughs> Looks just like John Dutton, but different role. But in Montana and yeah, talking about let him go. Yes. Maybe, maybe was is, maybe he is John Dutton. He that's, has ranches and stuff. That's what I mean. I think that's who he is. Yep. What other Kevin Costner facts you got? Got a fucking Let's waterfall see. sex party under his fucking master bedroom. Uh, he went to uh, he went to college for like 
like business and like accounting, I believe, and then decide to get into acting. So like I think he found himself in in college like he was quite the ladies man probably and I was imagine. like I would do really well in Hollywood only if I'm playing the role of who I actually fucking am which is Cuz I did I mean I I remember uh watching an interview about him I mean this was years ago that uh he only does movies that he actually likes yeah like roles that he's really into mm-hmm. like in like long long movies like Dances with Wolves fucking Two and a half, three hours or whatever. And then uh, The Postman, long. Waterworld, mm-hmm. <coughs> long. Yeah. Yeah. He's into it. Mm-hmm. He only had a marketing job for 30 days. Then he worked as a truck driver and on fishing boats. Yep. You worked on fishing boats? Mm-hmm. Yep. Listen. He's like six kids. Only three wives, though. He has six kids and three wives. Yeah. He definitely fucks. Yep. It says uh, Wikipedia could be wrong. Seven kids. I might have miscounted at one point. I was so overwhelmed with it. Might have a bastard. I don't know. Possibly. I would think (laughs) at least a handful. You know, at least seven you're acknowledging. (laughs) Hold on. So, do you guys watch Star Wars at all? No. Okay, well, I never did, and I just started getting into it this weekend. Yeah, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I remember maybe a year ago, and you talked a ton of shit I know, on Star Wars. I know, and I hated I it. Because I actually, like, I, I, I don't mind watching them. I think it was it was actually less than a year ago when we were talking about the new one that came out, the Rise of the Rise of the Skywalker or some shit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, I want to see it, and I didn't see it because the commercial was super cool, and that was when the theaters were open and people got jerked off in movie theaters. Now they don't. Mm-hmm. But, um... I think that's when that occurred. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I want to see it. And you were like, fuck Star Wars. What happened? Do you like Star Wars? Yeah, so I got really Fucking bored. Nerd. Yeah, I love Star Wars now. Oh, <laughs> so hold on. Nice. I found out I was watching it out of order. I watched one and two, which I guess is completely wrong because they're produced out of order. Yeah, kind of like so, that shit you like with the with the movies. With the uh, They're actually in order, kind of. Fuck off. So I had to watch four. You have to watch four, five, six, one, two, three. And then go into like seven, Rogue One, and all this. I don't know. I gotta look it up. But so my favorite Star Wars movie now, and I think will be forever, Uh is Episode Six: The Rise of the or no Three: The Rise of the Sith or something. That's a big one. It's fucking bad. I just watched it last night. It's badass. Mm, He's into it. Yeah. I I don't know anything about it. Star Wars. I've never watched one in full. Like never. No. Not one. uh, For you. Put it this way. This is what made movies great before they became highly politicized and all the bullshit. Mm-hmm. What made movies great was being able to get lost in them. Getting lost <clears> in <throat> it and putting yourself in there. Like, like that's the whole point of a plot. That's the whole point is not to, it's to be able to characterize yourself in a movie. Mm-hmm. Like if you can character, characterize yourself in a situation, you connected, you're there, you can be them. I mean, that's why it's so cool about, like, uh, 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 Lord of the Rings. Mm. That's why uh, Star Wars, Avatar, they, you're, they're able to capture you and put you in there, and you relate to one of the characters yeah. that's in there. And that's why I personally love movies. I mean, uh, John Wick, like, it's right there. They got you. So cool. Yeah, yep. exactly. All these things, and Star Wars did did a great job of it because it's such a long story and they're able to keep you keep your attention the whole time because if they're able to get you inside there you're there and me that's why i loved getting fucking st- stupid stoned mm-hmm. and going you get it now oh yeah i may i i all of a sudden uh i'm somehow able to turn off the rest of my head mm-hmm. and turn off the rest of the things going on in the world and become part of the movie mm-hmm. And yeah. whenever you do that, you get lost in it, and it just captures it captures like a piece of who you are within a movie. And that is what I believe what makes movies great, because then you want to bring all those good feelings and all those things that happen in the movie to life in yep. your world. You want it, you want you leave feeling better. Yep. But I started watching it for the stupidest reason. Like I won, I was so bored after I got hammered at the Christmas party. That weekend, when was that? Last weekend? Yeah, a couple so weekends ago. Whatever. I was so bored. I didn't want to play video games, so I was like, I want to watch 
Disney Plus. So I turned on Disney Plus. I saw The Mandalorian. I knew it was like really, really cool. So I turned it on, watched like 20 minutes of it. And I was like, I understand he's a bounty hunter, but I have no fucking clue like anything else. So I was like, I can't watch Mandalorian unless I watch all the Star Wars movies. So mm-hmm. that's why I started watching Star Wars. Because I want to watch it's Mandalorian. A <laughs> it's a huge commitment. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's a... It's a so I'm on six episodes out of, I think there's 12 if you count Rogue One and Han Solo's, whatever that movie is. I think I'm going to like them all. I got past the book. I fucking hated all the 80s ones. I hated four, five, and six. I didn't like them. Oh, yeah. One, two, and three were cool. Third one's my favorite. And like four, five, and six is technically one, two, and three. Correct. Technically, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah. Four, five, and yeah. six are what set the fucking tone for everything in there. In there there's so many gaps. Yeah. That they were able to fill in and create this whole entire thing. So four, five, and six kind of like start and end. Like it starts with four, ends with six, but then it tells the story at one. Yeah. Yes. Which is, I don't know, it confused the fuck out of me, but mm. I'm good now. Now I got to watch seven. But you got to remember this when those fucking movies were released. I know. Huge deal. Huge deal. Huge deal. Yeah. All the 80s movies, though, I, just, I couldn't get into them. I don't like them. Because they're 80s movies. I know. Hannah gives me shit for every old fucking movie. I make yeah, Kim, Kim can't get into anything that like looks like from old. the 80s. Yeah. Or like, or like mediocre acting. Yeah. Mediocre camera angles. Yeah. I'm like, I'm still into it. I am too. I'm like, yeah. they were learning. I yeah. only like Western movies, like older. My, my dad's favorite movie was uh, Good, Bad, and the Ugly. So I, wa- I grew up watching that. So... It's a huge Clint Eastwood he was fan. he was a he was a Clint Eastwood fan and a uh, John Wayne fan. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah. My dad, same huge, huge John Wayne. Yep, huge. John we Wayne. used to have we have uh, Western guns and fucking FBI wanted posters and oh, cowboy. Really? Head. Yeah, oh, yeah, pretty cool. I watched the new uh, Wonder Woman. I'm um, jealous because I didn't. Yeah, it's on. It's exclusively on HBO Max. Did you have a little plug for it? Mm-hmm. You know, some sponsored by <laughs> HBO you, Max. Did they now. give you any? Did they give you any discount codes for everybody? No, they don't discount shit on there. No, Mm-mm. they just told you to plug it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. I'm, Cocksuckers. Yeah, I'm getting paid though. So. <laughs> nice. Did you have the subscription? <laughs> no, I did. Yeah, but uh, why? Yeah, I've had it. And I don't really okay. use it. And then my brother-in-law was like, "Hey, it's." releasing on hbo max mm-hmm. i'm like oh sweet but i didn't know what it was that it was like wonder woman 1984 so it's like the first one was uh what in like the 40s world war ii mm-hmm. and now she's in 1984 i heard the movie was absolute dog shit yeah it was uh it was a i liked it because i just like superhero movies mm-hmm. period and i like you're, you're a hard judge on this yeah but um the production value of the first Wonder Woman versus this one was like shit. Like the the acting was like <laughs> some of the scenes were like, man, like that was really cheesy. Like it wasn't cool, like intense superhero esque. It was like cheesy T V level like what? movie. Yeah. I didn't see it yet, so I what? can't Yeah. So the sequel didn't live up to the production value of the first one. I mean, I don't think I liked. I really liked the first one. I heard the. Movie. the this is why ass. it was a huge pump. This it was sick. the first one. People were yeah. like, "Fucking Wonder Woman is killer." I still really liked the movie. I just know for certain people watching it, they're gonna be like, well, "Like well, if you're not into it." Well, like I was you, just gonna say, no, even even big time fans. Yeah. Like if the production production value is the quality of the product. I wouldn't say it's like uh, like a bad production, but you can see like it was filmed and done and finished during like these shitty times. You know what I mean? Like, because there's been a I lot mean, of yes, rela- I know what you mean, but that's not an excuse in my opinion. I agree. I'm anxious for Shane to watch it because he's a pretty good gauge he, of. It, well, I look at this as is this is the quality of a product. Mm-hmm. This is like us for some reason saying that. Um, the the ingredients that we use for all of our supplements. We started out using high-end, top-quality, patented ingredients, setting a tone for how the industry should do things, saying that we are this and this is who the fuck we are. We do the best of everything that we can because that's what we are. And then going, hey, guys, you know, coronavirus kind of put a damper on things, so we're going to use <laughs> some lower-end things. Like, that's 
the more I think about it, it's probably not that. I think this is what it is. It's it's based in 1984, so they they do a very good effort at making it look and feel like 1984. Why like, is it 1984? I'm sorry. I'm just gonna because be, I'm just Wonder, gonna be an asshole. Wonder right Woman now. is what thousands of years old. Yes. Like she's that Gale girl's thousands of years old. She's got a hell of an ass for being. Yeah, old. she looks great for her age. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Sorry. now this is 40 some years later you know she lost her significant other in some the first weight. movie <laughs> she lost some <laughs> Sorry it's okay Sorry but I don't know I I would recommend to watch it I I'm a, I'm a fan of it I'm going to watch it and I'll give a thorough review on Thursday's yeah. podcast But I I, th- just... I think you're going to notice like what I mean like when you see everyone and the setting set in 1984 you're like mm-hmm. well yeah it does look kind of shitty there cuz like that's how it was <laughs> like it, you wear that like I don't know it's <laughs> oh my god you wear those ugly clothes I know. Yeah. you do all these ugly things I know it's what 1984 you mean. I was born in 84 It was like that feeling of like watching like back to the future you know like like it's kind of a cheesy movie, but it's still cool, and it makes your like okay. imagination go. I think it was shot like an '80s film. Yeah, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Was it? Was it designed to do that? Yeah. There's some really cool. Oh, so it was designed to be shot like yeah. an '80s film. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then there it's like peppered in some like new age shit. Like there's some really cool scenes. But wonder if yeah. uh, I wonder. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna have to watch it. Yeah. Uh, I got a question though. Since I'm just I'm I'm just gonna ask a million questions just because I don't know much about these. Sure. I didn't watch them all. I did watch Captain America. Mm-hmm. Captain America was based in the '40s, and it was shot like and looked like people were living in the '40s. Mm-hmm. That looked super cool. Yeah. Or are D- we not? Are we saying that this was not that? DC hires really shitty directors. Oh, am I? Is, is, That's is, Marvel. This is two different worlds, like two different. Yeah. But DC we're still Marvel. using similar resources, like cameras. Sure. And yeah. Like all that, like even though your competitors, like our competitors with with our products, still use some of the same or similar ingredients. Yep. Yeah, they just use shittier directors. Like um, the only why? <laughs> They're cheaper, I think. Marvel's just better, period. I mean, I agree. Yeah, she, see, does, does does the whole population agree? Yeah, the only, so you can't fucking put a a current DC movie against a Marvel movie, in my you, opinion. Oh no, 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 no! Not in your opinion. In the majority opinion. Yeah, I would. I Are would, you with the majority? I would think so. Yeah, Shane. Yeah, so th- there's only a few select directors that DC uses that are good. Christopher Nolan, he produced Batman: The Dark Knight, mm-hmm. great fucking movie, oh, yeah. awesome. Zack Snyder, who was the director of the Justice League movie, which sucked, but he was the director before he got replaced because he had like a family tragedy, I think, and oh, he okay. didn't finish it. So they want him, they want uh, DC to release the Zack Snyder cut. So I'm interested to see that. And then who I forget, I forget who directed the Aquaman movie. That was a great movie. I thought it was a great movie yeah. too. Um, Joker, was, Joker, Joaquin, the Joaquin Phoenix Joker was. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a good movie. That's all DC. Yeah, yeah, but they missed on a lot. Like, like I thought Man of Steel could have been a little bit better. Yeah, Man of Steel could have been way fucking cool. Yeah, like Batman, like Ben Affleck Batman. Ben Affleck awful. Batman's trash. That's I watched. I watched a piece of it and said to myself, yeah. "I'm not watching any of." But this. Marvel just has better directors. I mean, okay. Deadpool one and two, phenomenal. Yep. Oh man. Yeah. It, DC sucks. Everybody feels the same? Yeah. I think so. Like we're talking like a strong 85-15 or maybe 90-10 or 90 or 100 to nothing. Yeah. I'd go 85-15 because they do have a good, like like I said Joker, Aquaman, Batman, Yeah, but Dark those Knight. are but those are one. Those are like 3 to 12. Yeah. There's like a 15% that like is solely like just hardcore DC. Like they're going to like it no matter what. Like better than Marvel. Yeah. Okay. We're like I'm such a huge fan of all superheroes. Like I think that's I'll majority watch of both people. But then and then just give it a, a solid, mm-hmm. a solid like yeah we know that Marvel's better. Mm-hmm. Like I really I still like the movie. I was entertained. Yeah no you're you're but you, that's what you like. You mm-hmm. just like them. You're gonna watch them regardless. But yeah. okay. Yep. Nice. Good to know. 
Excuse me. I saw people say that it sucked online. I saw a lot of people say that. The they new Wonder Woman? Yeah, they didn't like it. I can see why they said that. Yeah, but mm-hmm. it, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Oh, Zack Snyder didn't do Man of Steel, so that was that was pretty good. No, it wasn't. Man of Steel was good. Man of Steel I Two hate, was not. I I hated the Harley Quinn shit too, dude. I wasn't. Harley, really no, bad. Harley Quinn was not a good I one. I was not into that. I thought Suicide Suicide Squad could have been better. That was that movie was garbage. It was trash. Oh, yeah, really? that was a trash movie. I mean, it was it was. I didn't even finish it. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yep. And I don't turn off superhero movies. I watched the whole thing. Did you? Well, yeah, like fucking years ago. Like Ten years that was, ago. That was before before Will Smith got fucking eaten alive by his horrible <laughs> wife. <sighs> Big Willie style. Oh, no, whoever directed Suicide Squad should never be in business again. <laughs> that was a little harsh. They that was garbage. It was the worst movie of all time. I superheroes. I thought. I thought that there's. Yeah. I don't know about superhero movies. I've bad. seen worse. Not superhero movies. This was really. Bad. Yeah. This was bad. Besides yeah. Justice League, that was that was garbage too. It was bad too. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty shitty. They brought all. So what they did was they had the Justice League, which is Flash, Aquaman, Wonder, or uh, Superman, Batman. Yeah. They put them all in this fucking movie together. Well, they didn't introduce Aquaman properly. Like, the movie Aquaman was out after Justice League. So, you just go meet Aquaman in the middle of the movie. Same with The Flash. They never they never had a Flash movie. Mm-mm. And then they even have the guy from the fucking TV show didn't even play The Flash. They had this other fucking actor that sucks. Piss shade right off. Yeah. yeah. Did you see the new Marvel, uh, like, show that's starting with... Uh Vision and Wanda. Yeah. Yeah, or WandaVision. Yeah. Dude, that looks pretty sick. Yeah, same with uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yep. That's why I have Disney Plus. It's going to be That's great. Why I have it too. I it's have it. It's legit. I just don't watch much. It's awesome. What about Black Panther? I heard that movie was sick. Black Panther was a great movie. Pro- it's Marvel. in my top three favorite Marvel movies. Yeah. Oh, no shit. Yeah, for sure. So there's supposed to be a second one. I just don't know how they're going to finish uh. it. Yeah. It, it's gonna I'm be wor- a. I'm, that's tough. I'm worried about like the next four, like that were like supposed to be released in the next uh, two years. I feel oh like fans will, fans of the movie will take good to it just because of the circumstances. Yeah. It'll be like a Fast and the Furious Paul Walker situation. Like after, like mm. the movie after he yeah, passed away from, was good. From was what good. everybody said, that Chadwick was just fucking outstanding. He was mm-hmm. great movie or great actor. Um, I don't know who they're going to replace. Replace that's what with, I mean. If that's a tough guy to replace. They might have to wait a couple of years. Because they did Michael B. Jordan as the as the antagonist. I know. The, I would love him as actually Black Panther, but you can't do that. Yeah, now. no, I can't. He can't be Black Panther. He's just, he's just no. too cocky. I saw him as a villain first. Yeah, yeah no, he's you can't just replace not, that. Nope. He's a great actor too. Holy, he's a good fuck. actor. That uh, Ryan Coogler is the director of that movie. Mm-hmm. Fucking great, great director. That, like, I never, like, I knew, like, kind of what Black Panther was about, but then when you see it, like, dude, it's so cool. It's such, like, a visually appealing movie. It? No, dude, dude I don't you watch. Need to see I, yeah. We're going to lock I, you in this room and play bro, Black Panther I don't on the TV. watch a lot of TV or movies anymore. I don't, I mean, a, a, ever since SJ, motherfucker, you, I could probably count on one hand the number of movies I watched from beginning to end. Hmm. Man. I mean, all I know is like the ones that are big deals. Yeah, Black Panther is, a big and, deal. and that's a huge deal. That's one that like every 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 single person was like, just phenomenal movie. Mm-hmm. Well, even uh, like what what uh, Avengers is it where it's like mostly in Wakanda? That is the third, Infinity War. The Infinity War. That's mm-hmm. like one of my favorite. That it might be my favorite Avengers movie because of where it's held. <laughs> Yeah, and the, yeah. and I was, dude. That that battle scene was phenomenal. Thor Epic. comes down, dude. It was just fucking awesome. I'm a nerd. Man, we're nerding out hard. Yeah, <laughs> fucking, fucking nerds. <laughs> fucking nerd. I gotta piss so bad. Right All right, now. sounds good. Hey, uh, do we uh, any questions or any thoughts, Shaner? Oh, uh, you know what? We'll bring this back up. Oh, no, I can't do that. That's a little revealing. Um. <laughs> The questions I've been receiving are not up to par. No, they're a little fucked up. A little overboard. <laughs> yeah, you guys have some. 
<laughs> we started out like with great great times and all this, but it got it got a little out of hand there. A lot of lot of a uh, lot of incestuous questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. About fucking your moms or your dads. A lot of Vin Diesel variations. I don't like them. Yeah, I'm not I saw that. Vin Diesel with hair. Like someone tagged me in a meme. Oh. Like, does he have real hair? I think it, it was in. Uh, yeah, I think it was put on him. Uh, it was Mark. funny. Yeah, it was dark. Mark had hair, not Vin. Mark, that's what. I, that's what I meant. You threw me off because you said Vin Diesel. <laughs> Mark Sinclair. <laughs> they said that too. They're like, look at Mark with hair. <laughs> God damn it. Does Kevin Costner have an Instagram account? No. If you all right, I don't so know. this is a, this Fuck, is I should know that. This is a this is a question. <laughs> um He might. It's probably private. <laughs> If you could be, if, all right, so uh, the one question that I always fucking loved are the ones about futuristic or past. Like, if you could, like, transit, uh, no, is there just a bunch of Kevin Costner pages? Yeah, but they're sick. Pa like, this page is awesome. I'm going <laughs> to follow it. Are you talking about Kevin Costner, Modern West? Yeah. <laughs> it's verified. It is verified. Oh, my God. No, it's not. Like, look at, like, look at these sick pictures of Kevin Costner. Like him about to make sweet lovins. Yeah. Oh man. Fucking oh, he's sick in Hatfield look. and McCoy's. I oh, forgot about point. that. Yeah, great show. Let him go. Apparently getting phenomenal reviews. Him and Sean Connery. Look at that hair. Sick hair. Man. I might grow my hair out like his. I'm on my way. Yep. And he's a singer. Singer songwriter. <laughs> oh Jesus God. <laughs> So uh, I guess this is uh, I, like I was saying. Like I always loved uh, that question about if you could go into the future or into the past, which one would you do? And the one that was uh, presented on the Joe Rogan podcast at one time about like if uh, like if you were on death row or you had something or criminals like and you could send them back to a crazy time like time travel. Mm -hmm. Like, all right, you're going back to fucking dinosaur times. Like, rather than get <laughs> yeah. fucking killed by lethal injection, we're just sending you back dinosaurs. to fucking the time with dinosaurs or pick a certain time in history that you would have to live through. Mm -hmm. Like, you might die or you might, like, stay alive. It'd be pretty fucking cool. But to add a twist to that, all right, so if you actually had, like, a criminal or something that you didn't like, like, you guys had, like, a vendetta, right? Like, where if he or you saw each other, you're fighting, okay? And he's, like, a real threat against your life. And you have to send him back in time, but he doesn't die. Like, the only time he dies is, like, okay, starvation, thirst, like, all the natural stuff if he gets killed by something. But if he, like, keeps eating, drinking every day, like, he'll live. Uh -huh. Do you think he'll take that chance that he'll survive all the way up until you guys meet face to face? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, that's kind of similar to it's this, but, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Like, if I did some really bad shit and, like, they, um, you know, on death row... Like, Seth, you can either die by lethal injection or the electric chair hanging or get sent back to this time period. Me, personally, I'm like, fucking send me. Send me back, dude. I want to go. I don't care when it is. Fuck yeah. If you were like, it got to go back to, uh, like, say, it would be really cool to be like Game of Thrones times. Mm. You know, it's not Ooh. like real but like you're sent back to those times, like medieval times, I'd be like, fuck yes. 1920s with Peaky Blinders? Ooh. I'd like that one, I think. Yeah. So go back to those times and you got to survive in that in that realm being who you are now with all your technology and everything that we have, you're sent back to a time without all that. Mm. Yeah. Whole different change of everything. Medieval time would be difficult to walk into. <laughs> like not being of any royalty, like... <laughs> Be like a grueling fucking oh yeah like time for you unless you're awesome with a sword yep or you can make awesome swords yep just and you're, you're needed yep absolutely bunch of plagues going on though oh yeah you're mm. you're you're vaccinated from now though so you're good mm. you might be known as like some type of alien a little bit yeah true It'd be like Mike O'Hearn medieval times <laughs> but yeah I definitely do that did you see he looked like he was in like a holiday Hallmark special. You see people were people tag tagging me. us. Yeah, he's so dreamy in these pictures. Like, <laughs> and I, I mean that in the most like heterosexual way. Yeah, <laughs> like you're toxic. Uh, <laughs> but if you could, if you could, <laughs> <laughs> but if you could be any character of a movie, say that like 
you could go into a movie or a show like you could become that person and that was a real place like who would you actually become like what character would you be in a movie that's your life that's who you are you are living that character that's what you are this is a hard one like if you were removing yourself because that's the whole point of movies and we're on this movie <laughs> kick here like you are going to become that person forever like that's who you are now you're no longer Shane or Bob or Seth you're that guy yeah I got a couple. Yeah, you got a I couple. Got a few. I got a few. We'll do. We'll, we'll do. We'll pick two. Yeah. Um, I was talking, so let me think about it because I don't know. Yeah. I just thought it'd be pretty cool. <clears throat> Wait, does it matter if they die or not? No, no. Okay. It's it's up to you. It's it's you could if you're just living short life in that movie or you're right. living forever. Or do you want me to go first? Um, yeah. All right. Well, right now I, I want to be Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> Already, already, like you just started. He's it's a dude. fucking He's badass. It. It's that good. He's yeah. in it. Not Darth Vader. I want to be Anakin, Anakin Skywalker. Skywalker. Very different people. Yeah, but Darth don't die until he's later in life. He's lived a life. You're uh, good. No. no, I want to be Anakin Skywalker or uh, Rob Stark. I love Rob Stark. Ooh. Yeah. Rob mm. Stark, really? Yeah, I like Rob Stark. Yeah, I oh. definitely would have been Jon Snow. I thought you would. I fucking. I picture you like uh, <laughs> God. I picture you as like uh what was his name? Baratheon? A fucking psychopath. Me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget his first name. What's his first name? Uh, oh, Renly. No. It's my favorite show to hate. I fucking hate that I show. I wanted to kill every bad person. I in that fucking movie. hate that show so They should much. have killed every bad person. It would have ended a lot better. They, they were, should uh, maybe like so actually many. did their jobs and finished it properly instead of like a bunch of fucking assholes. I know. That's one thing that I'll never let them live it down. It'll always be I'll always be so angry the about best, the ending of that show. Mm -hmm. The best first seven seasons of any show. The best show that ever came on the TV and ended the worst way ever. Yep. Like, there isn't one person, there's not one person that is like, oh, that show ended great. It was the worst last season of all time. Yeah. Yep. Of all time. I feel bad for you because I remember you binging the shit out oh, of that. Oh, dude, I fell in love with that I, show. I don't even bring it up anymore. No, I, I'm, I don't even talk. I don't, nobody does. No, it's dead. That's what I mean. It's, it's literally the worst show of all time. It was the biggest hyped thing on television ever, and then no one found anything out about the White Walkers. No one found anything out about anything in that show. There's supposed to be a prequel. I'm just there, no, they canceled it because Did it they? sucks. No, they I don't didn't. know. I'm just, I'm just <laughs> angry still. I'm never gonna. I'm never gonna be okay with it. I actually thought you told me something I didn't know. No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's why nobody likes you. <laughs> oh, you guys go, um, Bob. Mm -hmm. Bob, I'm, I gotta, I gotta get a couple characters in my head. Here. You I, I'm going. I got two for sure. Um, yeah, like Tony Stark. Oh, yeah, for That's sure, you for sure, absolutely. Um, like good looking, cool cars, and he's Iron Man. And Iron Man, yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Pepper Potts is pretty hot. Yeah. Yep. Take it. Um, or John Wick. Damn it. Like for fucking sure. Yeah. Fucking can do anything. Yeah. Can kill any amount of people. Yeah. Clear a fucking building. Yeah. Of military like personnel. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, John Wick was on my list for yeah. sure. Was Six that? suits. Like mm -hmm. I just want his resources. Like I don't even have to be as deadly. But like <laughs> I want to be like, like, oh, they know who he is. Goes in, gets like a bulletproof suit, unlimited any kind of gun you want. He's an animal. Tactical training. Yep. Yep. Those sick gold coins that I don't mm -hmm. know the value behind them, but like. They seem cool. Yep. Yeah. Big fan of John Wick. Yeah. I would like to be Mr. Wick. Yep. Yeah. He, it's on my list. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, for the other one that. That this just popped in my head because I'm I was I don't really have anybody I didn't I can't think this fast because there's so many cool scenarios, but um, I don't know why but I loved every single one of these movies 
and I loved the character and I would get lost as that character because it's so adventurous and I'm not too adventurous of a guy mm -hmm. but there's a piece of me that would love to go do all these things is Indiana Jones oh yeah yeah, that's Fuck a good yeah. one. Yeah. That's a great one. I, I feel like that'd be because he's so smart about all history of absolutely everything. Mm -hmm. Fucking world traveler. Yep. Yeah. I'd also love a martial arts background. Like a like a sick character that's yeah. like bro, I can't be I can't put myself as anybody that Jean Claude was. Yeah. Because there's too much of a connection of, of his uh of just him. <laughs> yeah. It's more or less being Jean Claude rather than the character he played. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know which specific martial arts like character I'd be, but yeah. that I always wished I it's was like, like being a uh, Walker Texas Ranger when you're really just Chuck Norris. Yeah, you know what a great Isn't that fucking hilarious series. though. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking it's awesome. <laughs> I can't watch anything with Chuck Norris and it be serious anymore. <laughs> Fuck no, bro. That was a huge show. I used to love that show. Huge, huge show. You ever watch, sorry, this is random, uh, like the old Hercules show, like with like, what is his name, like Kevin Sorbo or Sorbo? Oh, yeah. And like the Xena, yeah, like Warrior, Warrior Princess. Princess. <laughs> like, yeah. I watched those when I was young. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck. The Andy Griffith show my uncle watched all of the fucking time. What was the, what was, wow, Matlock. Matlock. Coach. Huge. Oh Remember my coach? god. That'd be on before school in the morning, like early morning, like right when you woke up, like Coach was a big coach show. Coach would be on. I don't even remember the fucking the whole plot of that show. I don't remember it. Like I don't remember like the I, I forget the the situations and scenarios. I that do went too. On there. I remember the intro music and like a few scenes. What else? Yeah. Yeah. The only other person that came to came to my mind, I'd have to think about it, and <clears throat> but uh, John Snow was pretty sick. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pretty nasty. Yep. Real life characters <sighs> uh, that they made movies about that were absolute fucking animals is pretty incredible as well. Like fucking uh, like Chris Kyle, like the American mm -hmm. Sniper. Yeah. Bro, that movie was fucking crazy. Mm -hmm. And the fact that that's really what that dude did and all the fucking wild things that went on during that time and all of his, the, the mental stress and mental anguish that he went through, bro, that's fucking crazy. There's so many good movies. Oh, man, I love movies. Mm -hmm. Really good ones. Mm. Good times. Yeah. All right, everybody. I appreciate you listening. Don't forget to share the shit out of this and continue to be a hard-working motherfucker. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.